welcome you to Carter Finley Stadium in the North Carolina State Capitol of Raleigh. First ever meeting with Georgia State and NC State. And Dave Doran's team takes the field in the Ice Wolf White today as we welcome you to our coverage of ACC football. It's a very heavy week two schedule, and we're delighted to bring it to you from Raleigh today with the Panthers and the Pack. Great to be with James Bates. You'll meet Rebecca Capel in just a moment. The old coaching adage now is the most improvement my team is going to make is from week one to week two. You buying any of that? Maybe not for everybody, but for this NC State team, absolutely. They've got 19 guys that wore that Wolfpack uni for the first time last weekend. The youngsters across college football, no matter how much football they played, no matter how great they were in high school, it's all different, and you can't simulate game day no matter how hard you try in the offseason leading up. But there are some exceptions. You talked to Dave Doran yesterday, and he points out that his starting nickelback, Tanner Engel, all 5'10", 186 pounds of them, is a freak. And I played with Javon Kirsten. I'm like, well, wait a minute, looking at his numbers. He said, no, up top. Yeah. He said, mentally, he came in here, and he might as well have been a junior or a senior. He's such a great leader. He's so mature, and he's so confident. So that's nice to see. They're going to need to lean on him quite a bit this year at the Nickelback spot. Well, it's a reloading defense for NC State and coordinator Dave Huxtable, but on the other side, maybe the best trigger guy in the ACC, James and Ryan Finley. Yeah, all the guys that are coming back this year, they're not just over in Clemson, South Carolina. One of them is right here in Raleigh, and boy, are they glad around here. He, you know, you ask everybody around the building, trying to get, hey, what did Ryan Finley, Ryan, what did you need to work on in the offseason to improve? And everybody just talks about the, the neck up, the, the, the shoulders up. He's mentally, he has matured so much. He's got all those tools. He's got the quick release. He's very cool and confident back there in that pocket. And oh yeah, by the way, he's got that big, bad offensive line in front of him and some receivers to throw to. We need to find out more about those backs today. Yeah, we'll find out about that for NC State. Finley, a projected first rounder. Meanwhile, a guy who might be off the radar for the time being, Rebecca, trying to get on the radar for the next level, is at Georgia State at wide receiver. Absolutely, Wes. And if there's one weapon the Wolfpack will need to shut down today, it is wide receiver Penny Hart. But it won't be easy. Among his many accolades, Hart ranks first in the FBS among active receivers for both receptions and yards per game. Coaches say Hart is a self-made star because he had to be. He wasn't recruited by any other D1 schools. He stands 5'8 on a good day, so he's been underestimated his entire life. But coaches say his work ethic and his leadership outshines the rest. And to all those doubters, Hart says, keep it coming. You can see how passionate he is just during warm-ups, guys. Wait till the game starts. Yeah, we're excited to see Penny Hart today. And, in fact, we're going to get to see Penny Hart on the opening series. The redshirt junior from Roswell, Georgia. And ACC football is presented for you today by your local Ford dealers. So yeah. dancing like that in pregame is passionate, then I had absolutely zero passion. Is that right? I couldn't dance like those guys. <laughs> really anxious to watch number 18 live here today and see what he and Georgia State has for this Wolf Pack. This well, both these teams got off to season opening wins. NC State beat James Madison by 11 here last Saturday and a week ago Thursday. Georgia State got a touchdown pass from Dan Ellington to my new favorite name, DeAndre Champagne James, <laughs> to beat Kennesaw State in the final minute at Pete Petit Field at Georgia State Stadium. It was a champagne high, like the Sister Hazel boys like to say. Here's the kick. Over the head and out of the back of the end zone. Gentry and Hart were both back there. But for Georgia State, they've got an interesting guy quarterback making his second start. Well, they really do. He's a Juco transfer from Olive Branch, Mississippi, and Dan Ellington. And it was a battle throughout camp. Here's that game winner to Champaign. And when it was all on the line is really when he was his best and when he was winging it, if you will, almost a, a Sandlot style. Uh, driving Coach Trigg and his offensive coordinator a little bit crazy, said he was going to give me a heart attack. But that's when he really seemed to calm down. He, he admittedly was very nervous to start the game and miss some. We talk about week one to week two. We're about to find out right here with the quarterback for Georgia State. Three receivers, Ellington on first down. Far side, there's Hart and the first catch of the ball game. Boy, that's a good-looking throw to Penny Hart with Dexter Wright in coverage for 15. Well, Dave Huxtable, you better believe the defensive coordinator of NC State. He talked about 18 ad nauseum this week. 18, 18, 18. And sure enough, 
They go right to him. First play out the gate. Nice pick up the start. First and ten. Another throw. This time they'll come back here near side. And that's Gentry. And he will pick up almost five before he's taken back. Tanner Engel involved in the stop for the pack. They didn't give up any explosive touchdowns last week was one thing the coaches liked about this defense. And keeping them in front, but still, it's a little bit of cushion. You'll take that pick up a second down and five. Puts you in a good spot offensively every time. First running play of the day, Barnett, nothing. Andreas Bryant shaken up last week in the win against James Madison. Big 330-pound senior from North Charleston, South Carolina right there. Well, he, it was actually, it was on the goal line stand. He had the fumble and he, that he got hurt on. He picked up the fumble when they had the big stop. It was a defense that was great in the red zone last week. Let's see if they can get off the field here. First series against the Panthers on third down. Georgia State 6-12 from third down percentage against Kennesaw State. NC State held JMU 7-13. Ellington to throw. Now flushed. Sails it deep down the field. It's caught. Falling down is Gentry. At the eight, James. Ellington has some time early, and it's a good job early by the secondary, but he's going to have to use those feet to bail out presence of mind to throw it up there for his receiver. Some hand fighting going on. That's Tanner Engel, the nickelback. Had what looked to be decent coverage, but the separation Gentry getting rid of them and knocking on the door to start this game in enemy territory is Georgia State. What an opening drive. 46-yard throw. That's hard in motion. Ellington throws it out of the back of the end zone. That's a smart play by the new quarterback. There's Sean Elliott. The Panthers on the opening drive of the game have entered the CPI security red zone where they were three for four against Kennesaw State. Now, this is where NC State was particularly good last week. James, you mentioned they limited James Madison only one touchdown in five red zone trips for the Dukes last week. Yeah, and the reason I say that that's a smart play, I mean, how many quarterbacks you see taking a couple extra seconds trying to make something happen out of nothing and take that sack and push you back? The yeah. Lawson pitch to the perimeter. And Destin Coates goes in for the score. How about this, James? Sean Elliott promised us that this team would get off the bus ready to play. If this opening drive is any indication, they're, they're in for a four-quarter dogfight here in Raleigh, just like they were last weekend against JMU. Brandon Wright's point after good. And the native of Camden, South Carolina, fired up for his team, who leads 7-0. ACC College Football is brought to you by your local Ford dealer. By Synovus, the bank of here. And by Bad Boy Motors. Well, Georgia State has cast the first die in this very first meeting with NC State. And Destin Coates is the guy who took it home. Well, here's your guy up top, Benny Hart. He's going to come inside and block one guy, but it turns into a log jam. And you've got two other guys there defensively for NC State that run right into the pile. Here's Maurice Trowell on the return. Bouncing out toward the 40 and to the 43. 36-yard return. DeAndre Applin made the stop. That return game might be all right, all right around here. <laughs> they lose, of course, Hines, a great return man from last year to the NFL. Thayer Thomas, the youngster, steps up. And here you see Trowell as well. Nice blocking there on that special teams unit. 
So NC State from its 43. Reggie Gillespie will be the running back with Ryan Finley. That's Damian Darden, the redshirt freshman at tight end, into the slot at the right for Finley. Down the field for Thayer Thomas. This young story, the redshirt freshman from nearby Wake Forest, North Carolina, continues to emerge for NC State. Former walk-on, it was a four-man rush. A little bit of push there in the middle, but standing in there strong and cool is Finley. And only six foot, 193, Thayer Thomas, but he looks like a big old body there. Second catch of the season. Here's a throw to the near side, and that's Kelvin Harmon's first grab. Career reception 101 for Harmon. Boy, and Finley looks dialed in on the first two throws, James. 35 yards and two strikes. I think he stays dialed in come football season. There, there's nothing else but football going on in the helmet of Ryan Finley once football comes around. It, it's funny, the uh, sports information director, Annabelle, uh, you know, it, it's like pulling teeth sometimes to get him to talk about anything but football. Flag on NC State procedure in the backfield. Interesting note there, James, and as David Epperly, our referee today, is assigned by the Atlantic Coast Conference. They deployed three receivers here to the boundary side, and the other eight were still in the huddle there for a moment before they snapped that play. Now they reset the formation entirely. First penalty of the game on the pack. Quick fake. Here's another catch by Thomas. Just inside the 20 to the 19. Applin, another tackle after the six yard gain. Well, Wes, you mentioned the second and now third catch of the season, this young career for Thayer Thomas. He had the big catch, 16 yard touchdown catch last weekend against JMU after a big punt return. Uh oh. Almost picked. And that was Victor Hayward from Decula, Georgia, who played for Shannon Jarvis at Mill Creek High School and had a propensity for doing this as a prep player and now as a first-year starter, had a chance to take it to the house there. Oh, and nobody would have been close. And, and those are the plays. Those are the plays when you come into a place, play a team like NC State, you got to take advantage of them. You got to play a clean ball game, but you also got to give, take a couple of them that they try to give you. Third down and nine. Finley up in the pocket. Scrambles and threw it away. Harmon was there. We got a flag near the receiver corner combination. Cedric Stone, I believe, was the guy in coverage. Hold it. On the defense, number nine. Yep. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Junior from Independence High School in Charlotte. Stone back in his home state for a ball game today against the Wolfpack. And back out there early. He didn't start last week because they had the youngster at the other corner better against the run they felt, and that's, that's an easy call. He tried to argue it. He's got those blue gloves on. It stands out. Well, Coach, it's, it, believe me, it was right. I mean, he had him bent over. So Nakia Robinson, Jr., by the way, James, has been plugged in at running back. Redshirt freshman, 5'11", 191 from Miami. Dave Dorn told us we would see a few more bodies behind Reggie Gillespie today, maybe than we saw last week. Trying to identify that, that second back, that third back. Who's it going to be this year? This is Robinson. And he will get down to about the six on first and goal. Ed Kearney, the inside linebacker. Georgia State. Their defense is coordinated by Nate Duque, second year, native Kentuckian. And he's got him in a 34, James, but they... They look like they rock down in that nickel pretty comfortably in that 3-4-2. Well, absolutely. He's, he's happy with the way they, they came up with the big stops last week. They had a third down and long. Bailed NC State out here with a penalty. They forced a turnover as well on the goal line. See if they can get a stop here. There's Robinson trying to cover it up. And maybe to the five. Terry Thomas. Is the stop. And there's Dave Dorn. Season number six here in Raleigh, eight overall, 58-34 in his career, 46 years of age, a native of Shawnee Mission, Kansas. Done a phenomenal job of carefully putting NC State's football fortunes back on the uptick. 
Third and goal for State at the five. Finley. Oh, Thomas, what a catch. James, it's not like they didn't have good receivers here already. Here he is, right there, going to come across that goal line. Two guys on him, runs right by him, and then snags it with one hand. You mean that guy was a walk-on? <laughs> oh, wow, big 87. Big part of that drive to go down and answer. Let's see if they can tie it up at the extra point. This is the true freshman, Christopher Dunn. And the kick is good. Wow. Some kind of start. Seven plays, 57 yards, under three minutes. And the young redshirt freshman puts the pack on the board. Wolfpack right back down the field to tie it up, and thanks in large part to those big dogs up front. Georgia State's only going to bring four little stun up front. Nothing doing. When you give Ryan Finley that much time, it's tough to cover anybody back there, especially when you've got the cast of characters that they do here for NC State catching the ball. Payer Thomas, you see on the drive, three catches, 34 yards. In the possession, he only had one for 16 last week for the Wolfpack. And here's a kick that will bounce in the end zone. And Georgia State's going to start at its 25. But, Rebecca, the bottom line is, Dave Doran's recruiting helped pay off here. Yeah, his personal recruiting because Coach Doran told us when he first saw Thayer Thomas play, he wasn't going to see him play. He was going to look for Ricky Person and Thayer's older brother, Drake, or younger brother, Drake, and it turned out the best person on the field was Thayer. Coach Doran said afterwards, hey, nobody even told me about this guy before the game, so he got him to walk on. He worked his tail off, and then he earned that scholarship, and we keep talking about what a great story this is, but Coach Doran said, don't mistake yourself. This isn't just a story. This guy's talented. He can run. He can catch. He can change direction. He's earned everything everything he's got. Georgia State, second possession from its 25. And in the flat, another catch, and stepping out of bounds here at the near side is Cornelius McCoy, another true freshman on the roster for Sean Elliott. And a good opportunity for us to get to James Bates' four keys to the game. Well, first of all, he said, Sean Elliott, head coach of Georgia State, we're going to let them know we came to Raleigh. And that's what they got to do. They got to come out and they got to play tough every single snap. Let's let this play go before we talk about those guys in white. And there's a first down. They're going to move the chains, letting them know they came to Raleigh in this first quarter. That's for sure. And for Dave Doran, time to howl. Those, those young puppies, yeah. there's no longer time to yip. It's time to howl like those big wolves, like those big dogs. And they got to grow up. We talked about it off the top of the show, week one to week two. Don't you know it? Dave Doran jumped at it when he said, yeah, we've, we've got to grow. They've got big, bad West Virginia coming to town next weekend. Got to grow in a lot of spots, and guys like Thayer Thomas certainly stepping up young players. Pair of backs now with Ellington. First and ten after the nine-yard run, and boy, I tell you what, Trey Barnett, a couple of strong carries now. That'll make it about second and five, maybe second and four. Trey Barnett, 10 carries, 18 yards last week against Kennesaw State in the Panthers' victory over the Owls. Now, Georgia State, this is just their ninth year of football. Their first game was September 2nd, 2010 at the old Georgia Dome in front of almost 30,000 and change. They beat Shorter College. Bill Curry, by the way, James, was their first football coach. Here's Ellington trying to sneak out. Good pressure up the middle by the Wolfpack. Aline McNeil, the first guy there in a white helmet after the Panthers got off to a great start. Here's Penny Hart, the star of this show on offense. And then a nice catch, Gentry getting some separation from Engel. And then to the corner for the first score of this game. A nice block by Penny Hart on the perimeter. Loss of three here, long third down. Bateman in the backfield with Ellington. Downfield and overshoots the intended receiver, Efeti. 
Well, if that was meant to be a back shoulder throw, that's a that's that's a, a missed opportunity for Georgia State. It was a blitz that was coming. They they were bringing the house defensively. Coach Huxtable sent them all. It was picked up with enough time for Ellington, but just throws it up and out of bounds. Thayer Thomas had one punt return last week for 40 yards against James Madison. <laughs> Is this guy going to add to the early legend here again, James? The punter is Brandon Wright, who's also the place kicker. Wobbly kick. Thomas is going to let this hit, and boy, does that help the Panthers. Who touch it up inside the five at the four. 52-yard punt. Terrence Dixon down there to cover it. Cornhole. Cornhole. He, he sunk it, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Man, that's a good-looking setup. Is that bacon? Back after this. <laughs> This week coming up on ACC All Access with Jeff Fischel, the feature story on a man who returned to his Florida roots to take his dream job. Don't miss a profile on Willie Taggart of Florida State, plus an exclusive journey down the road to Charlotte. ACC All Access is back. Check your local listings on your regional sports network. NC State second possession from its four. And Gillespie, the back, pushes for a couple of yards before he gets turned back. Close to Panthers. Right there at the front. It'll be second down and eight. Well, one thing coming in, Wes, I felt like watching this Georgia State team that they had some skill players that could that could make a couple plays. I wasn't sure that in the lines, offensively, defensively, they could hold their own, and they have so far. Stephon Lewis, first catch of the year. 14 yards for the young man from West Palm Beach here. Got that special number one. Yep. Dave Doran awards one Wolfpack player each year the opportunity to wear that number one. It's good to have Steph Lewis back out there. We've seen Robinson. We've seen Glaspie. Now we get another look at a outstanding freshman, Trent Penix, from here in Raleigh, who's coming again. Now Thomas is going to throw. And wide open. Penix. NC State gets to some tricks. Jalen Jones might have saved the touchdown. Rebecca Capel asked Dave Doran yesterday in our meeting, what, what do you like most about coaching? He said, just knowing I'm gonna, a play's gonna work and watching it develop, watching the kids pull it off and watching it work, being successful, and it's plays like this. You gotta think a team like Georgia State is gonna go flying around, trying a little bit too hard at times to make a play. Everybody's trying to make a play there on Thayer Thomas, but everybody forgot about Penix coming out for the pass from Thomas. Wow. Yeah, Penix gets the carry for three. He'll come out of the lineup. Second down at seven, and Thayer Thomas's legend grows, Rebecca. Absolutely, and I got to tell you, after that play, all the coaches over here, including Doran, who you, you talked about, Batesy, mentioned in the meeting yesterday, they all had big smiles on their faces. That's one of those plays. They practiced, and it worked. There goes Gillespie, left side this time, spun off one guy, falls forward. First and ten for the Wolfpack after an eight-yard run. Lazarus, the safety, finally gobbled him up. And that was a few plays ago when I was talking about the, these big bad lines, even though they lost quite a few on the defensive side for NC State. I expected a little bit more of that today. Garrett Bradbury, the graduate senior, the center, leading the charge over there. And they really blew Georgia State off the football on that last snap. First and ten. The last be again. Got hit after about two to the ten. Turned back by... Trey John Stevens McQueen, who plays with Chase Middleton and some of those other guys inside at linebacker. It's interesting, James. You look at NC State, you mentioned the offensive line. Center out to the left is the strong side in terms of experience. Bradbury's 28 start today. Prescott at left guard, 16. Tyler Jones, 34, out at left tackle. The right side, oh, much younger for the pack. A little jet sweep here. And coming to the near side is C.J. Riley. Well, he'll pick up a couple more, but it's still going to be third medium yardage for NC State. Well, in talking with Eli Drinkwitz, the offensive coordinator of NC State yesterday, one of the frustrations from last week is we didn't make anybody miss in space. Yeah. Hines did that a lot. You know, who's that guy? 
Jalen did that a lot last year, so they've got to get creative with some of those jet sweeps. Georgia State does a good job defending. Penix back in the backfield with Finley. Here's Finley shooting it in on the slant. It got deflected. And I believe that was Stone that time who got a hand in. And the ball intended for Kelvin Harmon. Nice job to come with that front side hand and keep that, that back arm off the body. So many times you get in trouble grabbing the jersey with that back hand and you get another flag thrown and he had it thrown to help keep the drive alive. Last time down for Finley in the offense did Stone. Not this time, a great play on third down. First this try. 25 yard try for Dunn who hit last week and Christopher Dunn is now two for two in his young Wolfpack career and NC State's got the lead with 322 now to go in this first period of play. Let's visit with Rebecca. Well, guys, you've been talking this game so far how locked in quarterback Ryan Finley is, and that is just the type of guy he is on the field and off the field. He's always doing things to better himself. In fact, he just recently went gluten-free, not because he needed to, but because he did some research and read that it could be better for his body. He also wears a special type of sunglasses before he goes to sleep at night to help block out light so he can get a more quality night's rest. And then he also recently took up meditation. So coaches here say he is a very very balanced type of guy. Huh. It's interesting. Very well read. I mean, reads. He doesn't just Google search something. If he wants to know about something, he'll read a couple books on it. Is that right? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, he's he has gone above and beyond. You know, it's in, and it seems like you're talking to a guy that's that's been in the NFL yeah. ten years. You know, you're around a lot of those guys yeah. with the Falcons. It, does he not? He's just. He, he visiting with him this summer. I thought he was. Very well adjusted and settled in. And the thing I liked about it was he was extremely comfortable with coming back, James. Yes. To finish here at NC State. There's a line shot. Fair catch was called for by Hart. It'll be the ball at the 25 now for Georgia State. Well, it, you know, and I started thinking about it. What else is there? What else is there? And I, well, you know oh, what? No. With Batesy Paints, you know, you take the spirit, if you will, of Dances with Wolves and, and you combine it with the grace and the athleticism of dirty dancing. And maybe there's something to be said. About dirty dancing with wolves. Maybe that could help make a better quarterback. Don't you think? It's a lot of balance. I mean, that's, a, that's some strength, too. It's a lot of adjustment. <laughs> gotta be tough. A lot of balance. <laughs> Get a lot going on, don't you? <laughs> I don't want to do it. Finley might try it, but I wouldn't do it. Oh. Nobody puts Tuffy in the corner. That's exactly right. Thank you. Oh. Jennifer Gray would be proud. Here's Coates trying to find the same. Remember, he scored the touchdown and got banged around. After a game of about seven, Jarius Moorhead, redshirt junior from Winston, North Carolina, right in the triad area. 80 tackles a year ago and 12 starts. You start looking for the veteran guys from a year ago, James. You got to look at a guy like Moorhead who had 12 starts. Bryant's a guy that played a lot in that defensive front last year for the Pack. Very successful on first down, the Panthers have been. You know, here they are in a second down and three. All favorable positions. Ellington. Across the field, the completion to Gentry. A big lick knocked him out of bounds, but it'll be enough for the first down. Five yard throw. Well, a young man from Bale High School in Louisville, Devin Gentry's had an impact already here in three possessions. Good job on the blitz pickup coming off the edge. Head coach Elliott to trick at the offensive coordinator, Fuquay, the defensive coordinator. They've done a good job in preparing this football team. This isn't a team that, that's come in here wide-eyed and, and, and made some mistakes. They, they've come in here like they belong, playing hard. Wow. Dustin Coates that time banged around right at the line. Ibrahim Conti, who's added 50 pounds since coming to Raleigh from Harlem, New York made the stop here. Well, he didn't even play football until high school. You know, they finally get in a... You talk about those guys that are just raw. Well, I mean, here's a guy who probably didn't lift a, a lot of weights in high school. He comes in here, gets with Thunder on that weight program. Man, he's one of those guys looking for those, those four slots across that defensive line. They got to fill him up with the guys off to the NFL, and he's a good-looking youngster. State showing pressure. Ellington cuts it loose, and... Broken up and dropped by DeAndre Champagne, but there's a flag down in the neighborhood of pass interference, I think. Champagne was straddling that sideline here. Let's have a look, see what we find. Well, here's McLeod, and he's 
He, he knew it. Holding. Sean Elliott defense, sure knew number it. Four. Ten yard penalty. First down. Nick McLeod, the junior corner from Rock Hill, South Carolina. By the way, the best name in the game is DeAndre Champagne, by the way. Transfer from Jones Community College. It's pretty good, but Georgia State has a safety named Chris Bacon. Had his middle name started with a P and it would have been Chris P. Bacon, that would have beaten it out. But I agree. Champagne's the best. Thanks. Seth Page in the ball game. And he takes a cut to the right. Isaiah Moore, the stop for the pack on a two-yard game. There's a look at Page. Baker County, Florida, one of Batesy's favorite haunts. Well, it is because it's, it's unique to the Sunshine State. Down there, you get a lot of speed, a lot of speed, a lot of finesse. But the Baker County boys, they, they, you know, those guys take a lot of pride. You see bumper stickers all over. These good old boys, Baker County boys. Yeah. You know, Polk County's the same way. Blue collar, you always, you, you know they're going to be tough when they're from a couple of those schools. Ellington flushed from the pocket, got away from one, now going to cut it loose and overthrows McCoy, who had two white shirts lingering around. But boy, Dan Ellington does a great job of eluding pressure, James, on a straight drop here. Doesn't he? They need to do a better job of coming under control. You're there. Drop them. Come under control and, you know, you can't overrun them, and that was the one thing that they needed to work on going into this week, not just on the rush against these quarterbacks, but Ben DiNucci on the scramble play, yeah. stopping those quarterbacks. The quarterback for JMU, the hit transfer, last weekend. Third and long. Final minute of period one here in Raleigh. Wellington on the move again. Trying to turn it up. Up the sideline, and they measure him out just over midfield at the 48. Lareal Murchison, the uh, redshirt junior, angled him out, just a three-yard gain. Ellington's upset with himself because he, he thought he could walk that line and keep those toes in. Good fighting on the outside, is, and that's hard, of course, doing all he can to help him get a little space on that edge. Good job by... The defensive back, though, to, to continue to fight and stay in position where there's no room for the quarterback to run, so he'll get off the field. Right punt toward Thomas. He's going to run off from it, and it will one-hop into the end zone, 48 yards. And with just eight seconds left to play in the first period, the Wolfpack will take over on a hot, scorching Saturday here at Carter-Finley Stadium, our Dairy Queen fan cam. You folks stay hydrated. Boy, and teams are having to deal with this today, Rebecca, not just these folks who've come to the ball game. Oh, my goodness. It is brutal down here, you guys. Heat index is in the mid-90s on the field. And uh, as for NC State, I mean, Coach Doran told us last week was probably even worse. He said he needs to do a better job praying. He's been asking the Lord to give him a cold spell. But these guys started a hydration routine on Tuesday just to keep up. They've been doing IVs if need be to stay hydrated. They've got all kinds of fluids going on on the field. And after that first touchdown by Georgia State, coaches from Georgia State were yelling. And it was because the trainers weren't giving their guys enough water. So trying to keep it cool down here, guys. All right. Six-yard run for Penix. Final play of the first period. NC State 10, Georgia State 7. First meeting between the Pack and Panthers continues after this. Ten seven NC State as we get ready to start quarter number two here in Raleigh at Carter Finley Stadium in our opening quarter of play. The stats are interesting, especially the run perspective. Only 61 yards between the two teams, James. Well, you look at the run and pass, even though everything else pretty much even right down the line, but the, the run pass was even play call wise. Yep. Eight runs, eight passes for NC State. And the last two years, they've been just about right down the middle with the balance. Penix drops a pass out in the flat. It'll be incomplete. Second down and 10. Nobody more frustrated than the young freshman from Sanderson. Here's today's hardy star to watch. And oh, we got in the line today, huh? <laughs> you kind of have to. The former tight end. He's a good one. It, defensive coordinator of, of Georgia State, who was a nose guard back in his day. Coach Fuquay said that this is the best center I've ever watched on tape. 
He's done a good job against Dante Wilson. Pretty good nose guard across the way here today. The former tight end came in as a tight end, 250 pounds. Moved over to defensive tackle for a couple days, and he found his home at center. Philly on third down, and the ball is caught near the first down. A Messi, the sophomore, right at the line for the first down number. A Mecca Amezi, his sixth catch of the year, first today, a four yarder. Quavian White was there defensively for the Panthers. They're excited, they're excited about Amezi. Yeah, well, they should be those five catches in week one, the 60 yards against JMU, and does a good job of breaking it off right there at the sticks. So many times you see him. See how good the pack's been on first down. Finley wants some time here. He's going to cut this one loose. Coming back for it is Harmon. Flag down on the play. Kelvin Harmon around the Georgia State 30-yard line. You know, last week watching the game, even against Kennesaw State, Jerome Smith at 5'10", they have him missed at 180, got into a couple situations where he had good coverage and just the big bodies he had a tough time with. And that's the exact same thing here. Kelvin Harmon has inside leverage and just walls him off. Harmon goes six foot three, 215 pounds. And Finley, certainly, you know, that's one thing, too. He's not just out there slinging it around. He knows his receiver's strengths, weaknesses. He knows body types and the matchups. Taking advantage of it there. 39-yard throw to Harmon. First down play is Penix for about three to the 28. And NC State on the march again. Dave Dorn wasn't kidding when he said yesterday, we are going to identify that next tailback. Yeah. Who, who's in line? And you know, and they had a guy, you talk a, a lot about the defense, the defensive lineman that they lost. Well, losing Hines, he could do it all. Could catch, could block, he could run it. With a shuttle inside, and that is Dylan Parham. Redshirt sophomore tight end at 236 pounds on a 6'5 frame. I'm glad to have him back. He did not play last week against James Madison. They're still waiting on Dylan Autenreath, by the way, who is also in that tight end mix, and Kerry Angeline, a transfer from Southern Cal, who will be available after the fourth, uh, after the third ball game against West Virginia in their fourth game at Marshall. James? That was one spot from last week's game. They wanted to see those tight ends that did play step up a little bit. Here's a freebie. Marker now down. I think it's offside on the Panthers. Thomas another catch. Short of the first down. Lazarus there defensively, but I think this is on the Panthers. Let's see. Referee today, David Epperly. Offside on the defense, number 44. Five-yard penalty, third down. Michael Shaw. Guilty there for Georgia State. Oh, yeah. So replay on third down here. You see Darden is kind of lined up as the H-back. That used to be kind of Jalen Samuels' neighborhood, didn't it, James? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> He's catch a lot of balls from there, too. Here's an inside give, and boy, chopped down is Gillespie. And it will be fourth down. All right, well, here, I think here's a perfect opportunity for Dave Doran, for Eli Drinkwitz. You know what? Let, let's see how big and bad we are. You, you're supposed to, to be as, as good as anybody around up front behind Big Garrett Bradbury. And that's the way you feed those big dogs. They live off of stuff like this when you can try to put them in there and have confidence in everybody. Can you protect or can you block to try to get a couple yards here? Finley going to move the pocket right, shoot it down the field, and it's caught. Man, C.J. Riley and Finley threw that one between the numbers 20 yards. Boy, take your pick. Everybody talks about the big three at receiver. It goes on and on. And again, decent coverage. Look at the release inside that window by Ryan Finley. Beautifully thrown football. Good route run and knocking on the door. 
Give is Gillespie. Reggie trying to drive for the end zone. Got stacked up just outside the goal line. James, he's fun to watch. Oh, 15 is now. He really is. It's it's he's 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 so cool. You know, and I mean, shoot, it's not doing all that stuff <laughs> going gluten free for a reason. Yeah. You know, he's and he's so cool back there and confident and, un and understands what's going on out there in front of him. But then he's got the tools as well. Yep. It's one thing to just be smart, but you can't make it all work. There you saw he's got the physical ability to whip it in there. Jumbo look, here's Gillespie on the cutback for the state touchdown. Ten plays and Reggie Gillespie, second rushing score of the year. Battle won by the White Hats up front. There you see the big wash. You talked earlier about that left side of the offensive line. He's just blowing open a big hole. Good job by Gillespie. The vision to bend it back a little bit where that daylight was and on into the paint. Those are no, no kicker. He's got to have a kicker. A lot of people don't know that. He's got to have a kicker to keep the extra point. Yeah, Christopher Dunn is out there. There's the snap, the point away, and plainly through. A little chaos for the young freshman. But Reggie Gillespie gets the touchdown. And a 10-point lead for NC State. Me, I'm a lonesome kicker. <laughs> NC State's lead is 10. It's 17-7. to 7. Time for our... Sonovas, greatness made here. Georgia State's athletic director, Charlie Cobb. Outstanding player here for the Wolfpack. Why's it got to be Georgia Tech there, huh? Jim Tatum, award winner, second team, all ACC, and has been at NC State a couple of different times. Not only in his athletic, his career as a player, but also his career as an athletic administrator. And has done a phenomenal job in Atlanta since coming over from Appalachian State as the athletic director of the Panthers, who are in the Sun Belt. And ironically, James, Charlie Cobb is with yeah. Rebecca Capel. That's right. I mean, can you believe he came back for this one? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Charlie, uh, wow. So you played here. A little while ago. Uh, a, little, a little few years. A few, a few years. years ago. And, and now you're back here on the sidelines, but as the athletic director for Georgia State. So the competition, what is it like to be back on this football field? You know, it's a surreal experience, uh, but it's pretty exciting. Thankfully, I think for us, we were back in 06 when we were at Appalachia. We played here, so kind of been through this before. But uh, it's great to see a lot of old teammates, a lot of old friends, and uh, and really watch, a, watch an unbelievable game. Yeah, who are you hanging out with down here? You got a whole group. Yeah, so uh, Charles Davenport and Barry Anderson, we uh, we all played together at State, and can't I've seen probably 30 or 40 other guys. But uh, I tell everybody, because Charles was a quarterback, and uh, it's always fun when the quarterback comes up to say hello and, and reminisce and talk about old times. Do you have a favorite memory from playing here? Yeah, yeah, you have a lot of memories. I think the, the fact of being able to do it, you know, it's a childhood dream to be a college athlete. Uh, it kind of defines why I do what I do as a career. My wife was fortunate to be a great soccer player here as well, and and if for us, it's, it's your lifestyle. And uh, I think as you get older and you get reflective, it's really about the people you've met across. And uh, certainly you remember a lot of great games, a lot of, a lot of fun times. Well, you've put together quite a coaching staff here at Georgia State. T uh, talk about them a little bit. What's been your, your biggest surprise with them? You know, it's a, it's a great group of guys, and, and we're into people business, like a lot of businesses. And uh, they're great leaders. They're great men of character. And uh, really excited about what they can do for our program as we grow it. Uh, you know, it's eight years old, and you know, we're trying to We think our best years are ahead of us, and uh, really excited about where we can go as a university as, and an athletic program. And what people don't realize sometimes is it does take some time, right? Yeah, patience is, uh, as a fan base sometimes is not a word they like to hear, but, you know, you build on. We've got 51 first- or second-year guys in our program, and so as you try and grow and build them, let them experience environments like this, and as you try to mature, uh, you, can't, you can't replace experience at any level of your life. And, you know, wisdom comes from experience, and that's what we're trying to build. Well, Charlie Cobb, thanks so much for joining us today, and, and welcome back. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's fun to be back. Good luck today. Thank you. Guys. A little bootleg out of the backfield, and Bateman on third and nine picks up the first down. 14-yard play, Ellington to Taz Bateman is Richard Sr. 
heck of a play call and trusting that quarterback, Dan Ellington. He's going to use those feet. Look at him. He knows where that blitz is coming as a blitzer. You got to blitz that, rush that upfield shoulder. Up top, you can't let him peel and get, uh, and get outside of contain. And a great job by Ellington to make the athletic play and then to drop it off for a huge pickup on third and long. Boy, it looked like Nick McLeod had saved the day on the throw for Penny Hart a snap before until Ellington hit Bateman. That's By the way, thanks to run. Charlie Cobb. He's done a marvelous job in Atlanta. And James, we have been fortunate in five years. You and I have worked together. We've met with a lot of coaching staff. Our visit with the Georgia State staff this week was as enjoyable as we've ever had. It, it really was. It, you know, it's a... And, and he, <laughs> the tough part for him will be keeping this staff around, keeping yeah. Sean Elliott around. And, you know, it's not like you just roll into a lot of places and everything's in place for you. Look at what's gone on there, the yeah. new stadium and everything going on in Atlanta at Georgia State. So he's had to be, do what the, the normal AD does and then some. Here's the throw to Hart. Here's McLeod again in the coverage. By the way, Charlie mentioned Charles Davenport. Let me just tell you this. If Charles Davenport gets a helmet today, you want to see somebody go get it? Woo! <laughs> Nick McLeod, the cornerback, has been pretty active here as of late. Does a good job there to beat that would-be blocker as they try to get that little smoke screen to heart. So here's another third down and long. they got to go across midfield to keep this drive alive. But you don't have to tell Sean Elliott, this is a big possession. You're down 10 now. Almost to that midway point of the second period. Got the early touchdown, but NC State's dictated tempo the rest of the way. And now Ellington will be sacked. And that's Aleem McNeil. But nowhere to go. That's the luxury of the last few years is it's not just coming from one guy on the edge, but when you get the push in the middle as well, there's absolutely nowhere for the quarterback to go. Dan Ellington is bottled up in a hurry. <laughs> McNeil finishing him off, a local kid from right here in Raleigh. Right will punt. Well, McNeil almost got a hand there. Thomas is chasing this one all the way down, and it will... Hop into the end zone. Pretty good-looking punt from Wright, by the way. <laughs> 66 yards for Brandon Wright. By far his best of the year. Maybe one of the best of his career back after this. ACC football is brought to you by the Works Pegasus. Your workspace, any place. Find it at your local Lowe's. By Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Toyota, let's go places. And by Hardy's, featuring sliders all day. Rejoin you from Raleigh. Penix in the backfield with Finley, who has time, now shoots it across the field, and here's Penix. Oh, little nice move by the freshman. And almost 10 yards. Second catch of the day for Penix. Well, Stevens McQueen finally knocked him out. Check that one off. Four-man rush by the Panthers. Don't get anywhere close to Finley. And there is your check mark in making someone miss in the open field. Stopped him in their tracks. Good job by the youngster. And here is Penix again. And enough to cross the line for the first down against Terry Thomas, one of their outstanding defensive ends. Yeah. Elijah Drinkwitz, the offensive coordinator, telling us yesterday, we just got to see somebody make somebody miss. Yeah. <laughs> and next thing you know, Penix stuck a foot in the ground on DeAndre Applin. Well, and, and they got spoiled with Hines. I mean, Ooh, just, yeah. you know, Jalen Samuels, you, you get him that ball. And, and that's what football has become so much on the offensive side is, is spreading it out and making people miss, getting those one-on-one -on -one matchups, making them miss in the open field. Coming hard here to the near side. A flag has been thrown in on the carry by Penix. Applin a collision at the 35. Only five penalties for NC State last weekend. This one may be against them as well, going back the other way. Yeah. Pony, offense, number 66, 10-yard penalty. 
First down. Third career start for Joshua Fed Jackson today. He and Justin Witt. That's that right side of the line. Fed Jackson, third start. Witt, third start. That's a much younger side of that line. There's another look at it, and there's big 66 in there, and he running his guy and ended up tackling him there at the end, just trying to get in front. First down after the penalty, here's Thomas, another catch. And Thayer Thomas knocked out of bounds by Kearney in front of the Wolfpack bench. He almost got all of it back. Fourth catch of the day for Thomas, including a touchdown today. Game. You know, we talked about that that H back line. position, the H position for Dan Doran and Coach Drinkwitz, the offensive coordinator. <laughs> and, you know, Jacoby Myers had 14 catches last week, but Jalen Samuels, it was the same type yeah. of opening day from that same spot a year ago. Yeah, I've not seen Myers today. Here's a throw out on the perimeter. This is Riley going back to work. CJ Riley. Hard yards after the catch. And knocked out of bounds after about a seven yard gain. Boy, NC State, after giving up the initial touchdown, James, the Wolfpack offense has been churning. Well, first down, especially. That, you know, they, they were really good on third downs in the opener, 11 of 16. And you're going to be pretty good on third down when you have good first downs like this. They continue to pound. And here's another big pickup on the first snap. Yeah, Chase Middleton, the stop with Gillespie after five. What do you like about NC State that you've seen so far? First of all, I, the number of receivers in play in this offense is impressive. Oh, just so much depth. And you see the, the offensive line starting to take care of business. You, you, you can't help but start with number 15. Yeah. He's made some beautiful throws. I still want to see some flash out of these running backs, the young ones especially. The last beat. There'll be a couple more. It'll be third and about four, maybe three and a half for the Wolfpack, who has West Virginia here next Saturday at Carter Finley Stadium for a 3.30 start. And one of the Mountaineers. One or two more games in this state, and they'll have to start paying a tax. <laughs> After opening in Charlotte That's against right. the Vols last week. Well, they look good, Will Greer and company, against those yeah. Tennessee Volunteers. Nice homecoming for Greer. It's a big snap right here. Defensively, got to try to find a way to get off the field here. Can't let them go up another touchdown before halftime. Finley, hands to Gillespie. Tries to rifle through. Reggie is turned back. He'll be a yard shy at the 45 of the first. Now Dave Doran, remember, went for it on fourth down earlier. Got to believe that the Wolfpack's thinking about it here. And Damian Darden is coming from the near side. Back to the huddle. It was a, a fourth and about three earlier, but it was deeper into Georgia State territory. And here we've got a timeout called. We'll well, talk it over. Yep, Sean Elliott wants to visit. Dave Doran does as well. Just ahead of four minutes to go, first half in Raleigh. Decision time for NC State with a 10-point lead. Well, just ahead of four minutes to go. Georgia State used to timeout. Ninth play of the drive for NC State. Originated from its 20-yard line. And Ryan Finley. And now another timeout been taken by the Panthers. Huh. We'll take a timeout with them. Well, skull session going on now, James. <laughs> Back after this. So it was that quick second timeout by Sean Elliott. There's another big body in there. And that's Tyrone Riley at the would-be tight end spot. But look at these little splits, how tight they are on the left side of the line. One thing to look for defensively, those pre-snap reads that you hear about all the time. Now they're... Same personnel, but to the other side with the big bodies. That's Riley in motion. They're going to hand the ball left side, and a flag goes down. 
And the four progress is going to be to the 44, and that might be enough for the first down. But we'll check the penalty marker. Holding on the offense number 66. We will measure to see if the first down was reached before we administer the penalty. Well, I'm sure it's going to matter because if the hold is there, well, it does because then the possession they can punt won't have to punt if they didn't get it. So, beg your pardon there. He did get the first down. So, Georgia State wants the penalty. First down yardage was reached. Therefore, we will administer holding on the offense number 66, fourth down. After all that, those two timeouts. You know, just if we get a second here, we, on the snap before, right? Those, those, the pre-snap reads. When you watch tape, you hear about these guys. They watch a lot of tape. Well, it's, it's. You see how, you see how the different angles on the right side of the line. You see how they're closer to that center, it, and, and there's such wide splits on the left side of the line. A lot of times, you can pick up tendencies by watching tape, and that you know, and those, those big bodies, especially you get in the heat of the day, you get into the second half, and. It, you know, they don't want to take the extra step if they don't have to. So they, so they cheat a little bit. You know, sometimes on a pass blocking type play, they'll be light, light on their hands. Some run play, they'll be have all that weight up on the front. That's the way it went, and it would have been a first down, but the flag, and now they're going to review this to see. Well, they're reviewing the first down measure is what's happened right. here. Remember, they had Gillespie to the 44. And they did forward progress on Gillespie. Mm -hmm. It's an angle from a little bit behind. He had to get, he had to get to every bit of the 44 right. to move those chains. And this, this isn't really going to. Again, it's, it's ruled a first down on the field. So I'm thinking the only way that they could overturn this ruling is if we had a, a look right down the line because he certainly looks to have it there. And, and even on that, that first shot, it's close, but nothing to overturn it. By the way, a couple of, as we wait on the resolve of the review here, a couple of games have already gone to halftime. Duke leads Northwestern. Georgia Tech trails South Florida by four. And Sam Hartman's accounted for three touchdowns, James, and Winston-Salem. And Wake Forest leads Towson. All those are in the first half. And, Boston College has scored three times on Holy Cross in the opening quarter. Here's referee David Epperly. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down was gained, so therefore the 10-yard penalty is administered. North Carolina State ball, fourth down. That's good news for the crew because they had already moved the ball. You know, I think it, with, with all of the funkiness that has been going on on the field, you, you got to be alert defensively anytime you're near the middle of the field for a fake punt situation. You know, you get guys in and out, and, and it certainly looks like the way they'll line it up is, is a punt safe look here against this. First punt of the day for A.J. Cole, who last week averaged 36 and a half yards and had a best of 44. He can cut this one loose and does. And it will not check up toward Taz Bateman. It'll bounce into the end zone. It'll be a 45-yard punt. 50 yard, yard punt. Double dip for you of ACC Saturday. James, Rebecca, yeah. and myself will be at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Coastal Division. Dip, between baby, the Panthers dip. and the Jackets. Dip, baby, dip. And then Evan Leffler and Takeo Spikes are in Derby City at the new Cardinal Stadium. Renovated, expanded Cardinal Stadium, club level, all sorts of amenities for Puma Pass and the Cards against the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. And the touchdown squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure he's going to be there. Here's Ellington off the 20, taking the deep shot for Penny Hart. And Hart can't haul it in. Chris Ingram, sophomore from Mooresville, North Carolina, one of those first-time starters last week, defending 
for the Panthers. Well, and it's a, it's a good double move, shows you good protection by the offensive line. And it's also a good job by Ingram, just a sophomore. He watches those eyes, makes sure he's in phase first and plays the catch up after the double move. Sees those eyes get big. If Penny Hartz snaps that head around, and a nice job. Second and 10. Ellington shoots it inside. That's Gentry spinning away. First down. And finally hauled down by Moorhead out near the 40 yard line. 20 yard throw to Devin Gentry, who had three for 120 last year in the game at Texas State. Fourth catch today. This is Griffin that's going to miss this tackle. And you've got to drop him. You've got to drop him. You can't, you know, you're going to hit some of these speedsters as you get into the thick of this schedule, and they're going to take it all the way to the paint. Big play. Gotta come under control and make that stop. And the carry, this is DeMarcus Kirk. 38. There's also 28, which is Seth Page, who was in the backfield at the same time. So that's Kirk, an 11-yard run. Panthers have had some success, James, from the sprint formation running the ball against NC State. And I know that's got to concern their coordinator, Dave Huxtable. Now Bateman is coming to the backfield for the Panthers. But just over the midfield line with two and a half minutes to play here in the first half. in motion. A little fake. Ellington stepping away and has lots of room. Ellington and slides about the 31-32 yard line. Jermaine Pratt was chasing him. It's a 17-yard run. Well, had him going every which way. And watch this. Roseboro is about to drop Ellington. And you can't coach that. Just that, that instinct, the football instinct. And we talked about it. When it's almost like a like a pickup game feel. Yep. That's a lot of times what you see when kids are out there just running around and making things happen. Huge play by Ellington to feel the pressure, tuck it and go. Quick throw on the perimeter. The catch made by Jonathan Effetti. The man from Vance High School in Charlotte, who he's back in this home state, grabs the catch there. He had 20 grabs a year ago, 14 of them, by the way. Came to the last three ball games. He had one last week in the win against Kennesaw State. Panthers with a little momentum with 80 seconds left to go. Tossing toward the end zone, and Owens cannot break away. Transfer from South Carolina, 6'4", Christian Owens. He had gotten Stephen Griffin in coverage, who's in playing the nickel. That's a spot that Tanner Ingles started the ball game in. Well, with Danucci of JMU last weekend, they had a tough time dropping him with the scramble play. Here today, they've had a tough time dropping Ellington when they get to him with the rush. If they get back there on the rush, they've got to contain. They've got to keep him in the pocket and let your other guys come and help out. Keep him bottled up. Sean Elliott's got one timeout left, and he's going to use it here. And that's a tough one, too, because there's 114 left. You'd like to have the luxury of having that in your back pocket as you go down there and try to make something happen. Well, his kicker, Brandon Wright, his longest is 50 yards, but Dan Ellington, the story of the drive here, James. Without a doubt, and, and coming in, you know, and talking to Coach Trickett, his offensive coordinator, he said he admitted to me last week that he was just nervous off the top. His first start there at Georgia State after transferring from junior college where he had played a lot of football there, but he missed some. He, he was off, he was overstriding, and, and he didn't like the, any of his mechanics but then he calmed down a little bit as that first half went on had a nice drive to close the first half and then of course the game winner at the end and he certainly hasn't been panicked at all here today and it shows on that drive very heady football player James let me retrace my steps here the first time out of the two on the fourth down play was NC State okay. it, the official showed it as Georgia State when they called it so Sean Elliott does have one left Dave Dorn has two in the final 74 seconds. Here's Ellington, this option to look again, and this is Bateman, and he'll get a couple maybe before Andreas Bryant makes the tackle. Big 91 came down the line. 
Now, Brandon Wright, the field goal kicker, his career best is 50 yards. Boy, NC State does a good job here of defending the option. You know, the two little wrinkles that they, when, when the first down earlier, when they ran a little wildcat, didn't yeah. work out for them, and here they try to get fancy with the option. And NC State stuffs that as well, so it brings up the big fourth down. And the Wolfpack has just called their second timeout. So a 10 point lead. And now Sean Elliott's talking to those big guys up front. You saw him get with Shamarius Gilmore, who's a 295 pounder from Riverdale, Georgia. Playing at the left guard spot, but this will be right. And this will be 44 yards. Got a 35 yarder last week. Snap. Tries away. And it's no good. So right misses from 44. And NC State. Keeps their 10-point lead with 46 seconds left. Well, you have the leg, that's for sure. Yep. And the pack now with 46 seconds left and one timeout. And a guy that can spin it a little bit at the QB slot. All right, I'll let you, even though you're a great linebacker I'll let you put your OC hat on here you know it's I don't think I, I, I go for it all right here but I, you know medium range type play you hit it and then you speed it up you, you miss it and maybe go into a little slowdown mode most definitely don't want to turn this football over cuts it loose far side this is Kelvin Harmon and he will get out of bounds it's not a first down but that's eight straight now for Finley with 40 seconds left well the, the accuracy just keeps on coming for Ryan Finley. Very accurate passer a year ago, second in the ACC, over 65%. So there's a nice little pickup on first down. It's still not quite in the panic mode, thanks to Harmon. Hard play to get out of bounds. Right across the middle and breaking away, Kelvin Harmon. Inside the 35. Now you got to hurry it up. Good yep. play by Harmon. Get up there and get on the ball. 29 seconds left, 34-yard throw. Stone saved the touchdown. Good protection up front again by the big guys. And Georgia State's got to do all they can to keep this lead at 10 here before halftime. Finley to his right. Still looking. He will get out of bounds. Stops the clock. Hurdled the edge of the bench. Got by the big fan in the Panther bench area. He was trying to look, was it a mezzi? He was trying to find it looked like around about the 10 yard line and elected to tuck it. Dave Doran knows his quarterback is not gonna put the ball in harm's way here. Well, and he knows not to put himself in harm's way too. <laughs> Run it out of bounds. So 16 now left before halftime. Four in the formation to catch it. Finley with 11 seconds throws caught Thayer Thomas cuts it back inside timeout NC State with five seconds 24 yards to the redshirt freshman Thomas well it's a good job by Finley after the protection breaks down gets a little bit of pressure and gets outside to buy some time and setting up shop there is Thomas he, he He's got a couple bodies in there, thinks he can take it to the house. They got to burn that timeout. And you know, it, it really wouldn't have been too much of a difference had he gotten what he could and then gotten out of bounds. It still would have been one play. And that one play looks like it's going to be a field goal. What a first half, though, not only for Finley, but the young freshman wide receiver, Thayer Thomas. You betcha. 27, 28 yard try for the freshman Dunn. Five seconds left to go in this first half. Try is away. And it is good for Christopher Dunn. So a 28 yard field goal is the final play of the first half. And NC State 
leads Georgia State 20 to 7. And Rebecca Capel downstairs with our coach's corner brought to you by the Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Coach, you managed to extend your lead going into halftime. What does that do for momentum going into the second? Well, with us getting the ball first and the third, we got a chance to get 10 points here unanswered. So that's a big deal. It was a good job by the offense going down the field, defense holding them and on a missed field goal. So you always like that when you can score right before the half with the ball coming back to you to start the third. All right, thank you, the Coach. All right, guys. That's Dave Doran. His team leads now by 13 on a steamy Saturday in Raleigh. Georgia State struck first. The pack has scored 20 unanswered. Hardy's ACC halftime report from our studios coming up next. This university is on a march to achieve our full potential. We help empower each other to dream big and do big. That's why I really love our slogan, They Can Do. When you get these folks from NC State, they don't mind rolling up their sleeves and getting their hands dirty. Companies want to hire NC State students. We make something impossible possible. We've been equipped to go out there and do great things and to change the world. It's in the DNA of the place. We're here to think and do the extraordinary. To the Hardy's halftime report. I'm Ashley Shambody. Last week, NC State defeated James Madison 24 to 13 for Dave Doran's fifth season opener win in his six seasons as the head coach of the pack. Recently, our own Rebecca Cable sat down with Coach Doran to find out a little more about what he's doing when he's not coaching football. First and latest concert you've attended? First concert ever was uh, Van Halen, 1984. Pretty good concert, David Lee Roth. Most recent concert, I went and saw Tyler Childers, kind of a small um, Chris Stapleton-like artist. If you could be an animal, what would that be? Which animal? I'm gonna have to say a basset hound. We, we own one, and he's like the happiest animal on the planet. Take me back, what, what kind of football player were you back in the day? I <laughs> uh, played small college football at Drake University. I loved the game. Uh, absolutely loved it. I would say I was a, a very physical uh, player. I was a tight end and an offense that didn't throw to the tight end. So I mean, I was just an offensive lineman that got to run routes every now and then. Would you recruit yourself? Absolutely. Oh yeah, because I worked hard, never took a day off, never missed anything, was always on time, gave everything I had. And I was a four-year starter at a school, so I think I proved that I could play a little bit. In six years in Raleigh, Dorn has put together winning seasons and NFL talent. Last spring at the NFL Draft, an ACC best seven Wolfpack players were selected. When we come back, we'll look ahead to next week as the Hardys Halftime Report continues after this. This is an encore presentation of ACC Live, our weekly show about life in the Atlantic. Well, we were all saddened to hear this week of the passing of Mike Hogwood. Mike was a treasured member of our ACC media family. And in fact, his roots in the ACC were strong. He was born in Charlotte, went to high school in Greensboro at Grimsley, and then college at Lenore Ryan, and worked in the Greensboro television market for a long time before ultimately joining the ACC productions of Raycom and Jefferson Pilot, and of course, our group here on the Regional Sports Network as well. He was a passionate fan of the Atlantic Coast Conference, a passionate uh, enthusiast of the conference in all of its sports not just football and basketball where he became commonplace but his his roots being so strong in this league really reflected his deep enthusiasm and of course love for Atlantic Coast Conference sports we're gonna miss Mike we're gonna miss that passion we're gonna miss that enthusiasm but we know he's in a better place Mike Hogwood was a friend of the ACC and a friend to its member institutions and he left us this week our thoughts and prayers are with Mike and his family. A memorial service will be held on Tuesday in Greensboro to honor him as we do today. Mike Hogwood, he loved the ACC. Our best to Nancy and their children, Melissa and Rob, on a life well lived. ACC football is brought to you by Honda Generators. 
Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Be bold, be confident, live fearless, North Carolina. And by Schottenkirk, ATL.com. Well, NC State got a field goal from Christopher Dunn on the final play of the first half, and the Wolfpack's going to get the ball to start half two as we welcome you back to Carter Finley Stadium on an ACC Saturday with James Bates Western. Great to have you with us here this afternoon. Interesting half because Georgia State took the opening kick, went right down the field, put seven points on the board, and just a hard serve in NC State's court, wasn't it? Well, and they took it to the very end of that first half to Georgia State. Panthers missing the field goal, and NC State doing a good job of, you know, those are incredible reps. We talked about off the top of this show, the reps for these younger guys. Look at all the younger guys that have grown up. They right. have time to howl was our key for NC State. They've grown up, and they got the, they got a two-minute O successful, and Dunn, who's a freshman as well, with a nice field goal. So they need to take advantage and get some momentum off this opening drive in the second half. All right, let's give you a quick check of the halftime stats, and you see Ryan Finley, 10 consecutive completions to end the half, 324 yards of offense and eight plays of 15 yards or more. I bet that's on Sean Elliott's punch list as he visits with Rebecca Capel. Well, Coach, you guys got going hot with that early touchdown, but it struggled to get on the board ever since. What are you looking to see out of your offense in the second half? Well, we got to finish some drives. You know, we're putting together some decent-looking drives, and then we spits it all out on a certain play right there. Got to finish. You know, you're looking at it. You, you make the field goal. You're looking at a seven-point game, and they go down, and now you got a 13-point. We've got to shore up pass coverage in our secondary, get some pass rush. I think we're holding our own, running the foot, holding them from running the football. We go out there and fight. We got to come away with something. Good luck in the second, Coach. Thank you very much. Nice. Well, there he is. He, he hit the note, James. You and I, you saw it on the stat sheet, NC State, and they want to run the ball better and are right. still kind of sorting through that a little bit, it looks like. They absolutely are. Just 50 yards on the ground for the Wolfpack in the first half. Phoenix showing a little bit of flash, but still nobody's setting it on fire, toting that rock. No return by Trowell. And here is that last drive. Finley going to the house on 10 straight catches. Yeah, and Harmon, after that missed field goal that Sean Elliott talked about, plenty of time. And, and you know, you again, you try to simulate th these kind of things. It's two-minute oh, one-minute offense in this situation, in practice, in these scrimmages. But there's not a whole lot going on in that field house over there when you're trying to simulate it. So well, those are opportunities that you really grow from as a football team. There's a look at every time they touch the ball, Ryan Finley and company in the first half, hoping for a big TD in that column at the end of this drive. Finley on a slant, and the catch made, and that's a Mezzi, a Mecca Amezi, the sophomore, on his second catch of the day. That gives him seven on this young season. Second down. Three yards to go. Dave Dorn talked about the double dip here. Look at Finley shooting it to Harmon, and he held on to it. First down at the 37. Finley comes. James, I'm impressed with the just the sheer fundamental technique the young man has at quarterback. Yeah, I, I think that the, the, the tools are all there, and we've seen it in the past. We've seen how pretty that release can be, how smooth it's good job there by Harmon to go down and make sure it doesn't hit that turf as we take another look at it. But he just stays so cool is, is really the thing that stands out to me. Quick handoff for Robinson. And he'll hit the line for a couple of yards, pick up about four. DeAndre Applin, senior from Adairsville, Georgia, a Bartow County way. First-year starter as a senior who had an interception in the win against Kennesaw State, got the tackle there. Those first half numbers for Finley and one throw in the second. Here's the second. Here's Harmon on the deep ball, and there's his first miss in a while with Jerome Smith in coverage. And no flag, and Dave Dorn's not happy on the Wolfpack bench. Well, he's got a better look at it from way up here. I wasn't so sure he was all over him, but he's... He's pointing up at the monitor, and this is what they're going to see on the replay booth, fighting a little bit with those hands. And he, it's, it, that, that backhand is really what could have gotten him in trouble. You see how he wrapped it up and underneath. Right. Does a good job with that front arm. Goes straight up. We talked about it earlier, the size difference. He's fighting an uphill battle, and he's been in coverage. Really, they're in phase so many times, but just those bigger bodies just give him fits. That's a streak of 12 in a row, and back to work goes Finley on a new streak with Thayer Thomas. 
into Georgia State territory. 16 yards to Thomas with Lazarus on the coverage. I thought our conversation with Elijah Drinkwitz was interesting yesterday when we started talking about Jacoby Myers and 14 catches last week against James Madison. And Drinkwitz kind of got this look on his face <laughs> like, well, it's all about who plays the H. Yeah. <laughs> well, Thomas is playing the H today. Six catches. And he's playing the heck out of the H. Yes, he is. Here's Riley on a quick throw. A couple of yards for C.J. Riley. Out Brad James, I'm gonna, let me ask you, what we've seen today, almost two minutes into this third quarter, and NC State's trying to find a personality running the football. Right. But the way they quick throw you sometimes, that's like running it. Well, it, it is. But when it's all said and done, if you want to be the team that, that ends up in Charlotte, you've got teams have got to fear the ground game. And, and you've got to establish. It's, it's the same thing you hear a lot of times. You don't fear the deep ball from a team. And so they, they are, they're one-dimensional. And until they really have that guy that can beat you in space, that you're going to have to, you know, you, you have to help out with a receiver, or you have to help out with some of those backs in the box. There's Jacoby Myers, who was playing the H last week. Third highest in school history out of Lithonia, Georgia, and Arabia Mountain High School. And the thing is, look at how Finley, we've talked about all these pluses with Brian Finley, how he spreads it around. It doesn't matter who he's throwing to. Right. You know, even to Thayer Thomas. I mean, how many how many balls, you know, in a, a game type situation have they seen? Not many. There's Thomas again, and that ball got fumbled and went out of bounds. Got knocked away. They're going to call it incomplete. Jalen Jones is the guy who banged it out of there. Now they're going to call it a catch and a fumble. Well, it's, it's, it's three steps. There's the control, the catch, the control, and then the forward move. And as he makes that turn. State's going to go for this on fourth and short, by the way. Thomas had the first down. And a great play by Jones who banged it out of there. Boy, that was textbook punch, too, wasn't it? Absolutely. It's, you know, and one thing I've noticed with Thomas is he's, he's really cradled that football well after the catches. Gillespie not going to get there. Wow. Ed Kearney is the guy that stuck that big white helmet into the backfield first, and then Terry Thomas over the top turned away Reggie Gillespie. Wes, they got a few big stops on third down last week, forced a turnover on the goal line, and here, out in the second half, they get a huge stop against NC State. Big fourth down stop by the Panther D. Ed Kearney is going to penetrate, and penetration is going to rock what NC State had in mind right there. Boom, there you see him knifing through, and everybody else holding their own, including on the outside. Jordan Strawn, and here's the roll-up. Watch big 65. Bradbury, Garrett Bradbury is going to go down, and some bodies are going to fall on him. He's okay. He got up and went off to the side. They're, they're still taking a look at him. He got up under his own power, but that's why those offensive linemen always have on those big knee braces, especially in practice, because it's happening all the time in those piles. Ellington breaking free. Design quarterback draw, and Ellington will get the first down. 14-yard run. All the best starting field position of the day for Georgia State. And after the early touchdown, you see only five and then six and six and finally eight at the end in terms of plays, but they were turned away, and now they pick up, well, 15 yards on the first snap here, James. Well, four quarters. I mean, go back to that key. They're going to know we came to Raleigh, and they just, they just continue to scrap. Ellington bumped into Page, now going to cut it loose, and nobody home. I think it looked like Cornelius McCoy was the intended guy. He had champagne going deep, but Ellington hit Page after the snap. The running back, well, yeah, he just, I think he wanted to shovel right, and Page was in his way. And, and that was one thing that they had some mix ups last week, those backs picking up the blitzing. Kennesaw State team. Uh, Kennesaw State blitzed on about 80 80 percent of the downs and some of the backs missed a couple. This time it looked like it was the wrong side. If he had another beat Ellington he would have hit Champagne. Give is to Bateman and he'll roll off about four yards. Andreas Bryant the stop. So it'll be second down or third down to six here James. 
you know, from Page to Barnett, we saw quite a bit earlier in Bateman. I like, I like the juice in these three backs that yeah. Georgia State has brought to the house here today. Yep, Taz Bateman's back there now, the redshirt sinker, Eaglewood, California, who averaged about three and a half yards a carry last year. Inglewood always up to no good. <laughs> That's right, yes. Now reset perhaps with the play clock down to five seconds. They get it snapped. Wellington giving ground. Now in trouble. Flushed out. Big Bryant chased him. And it is caught. What a catch by Effetti near the first down mark. It looks like he's going to be just shy. But how about Ellington, who bobbles the snap initially? Look at 91. Gets in a little him. bit of trouble. Puts it in there where only Effetti can catch it. My goodness. What, what a playmaker Dan Ellington is for Georgia State. Quite a transfer, a Juco transfer out of Mississippi. And here we go, a fourth down and short. Let's see if this NC State defense can repay the favor and get a turnover on downs. Bateman in the backfield. In motion, that's Gentry. They'll flip it to him. Now here's the reverse, and it's Penny Hart in trouble and clobbered by Engel. Maybe one too many on the reverse. Wes, we talked about the true freshman from Dr. Phillips in Orlando off the top of the show. Coaches say he's just mature so many years ahead of the game. The freshman with a huge stop. Ball at the 47 when we continue, but first, our Quicken Loans, the right play. James? Well, take a look here at the free, at the uh, nickel, rather, Tanner Ingle, true freshman. And what you're relying on is these, I, I beg your pardon, right here, is these, these true freshmen, these youngsters just go flying out of there when you've got a misdirection type play. He stays at home again, just like Dave Doran told us yesterday. So mature. That one batted down. To the third by Strawn. But, you know, and, and you look back, this is a very young defense for Georgia State. Mm -hmm. And NC State took advantage of just that earlier with the double uh, pass uh, from Thayer Thomas. But staying home is right there. A the true freshman starting nickelback. Tanner Ingle. Good play. A real good play. Second college game. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's not like he's been hanging around as a redshirt for a year either. Yeah, the give is to Nakia Robinson, Jr., and he'll only get a yard there, so it's third and long. Stevens McQueen the stop. In all the prep we, we do for these games, and, and heading into this game, the one thing that I, I, that I never really found out, you're right there in Atlanta. Yeah. You, Georgia State in your backyard. Them going to a bowl last year. Huge. E e yeah, so that's that certainly wasn't expected. That was monumental. Not in the first year of Sean Elliott's administration. For sure. I, I, the thing that impresses you is how they've had a piece here and a piece there as mm -hmm. they've grown to their ninth, this is their ninth year of football. Third long here. And offline is Finley trying to go to Harmon. In coverage over there was Quavian White. James, the thing that impresses you about what Elliott has done is they, as I said a moment ago, they had player here, player there. He's talking core culture stuff, and I'm not sure any of that ever was really developed. Maybe early it was, but in the in the infancy stages of the program, the core culture was. And the other thing too is Charlie Cobb, the athletic director, coming there with a football mindset to, you know, get facilities. The the addition of Old Turner Field to Georgia State Stadium and Pete Petit Field there and having a place to call home not playing games in the Georgia Dome that makes a big difference and yeah you go from infancy to FCS and then you take the quick jump I thought to FBS yeah. you know how that yeah. is and the Sun Belt they don't call it the fun belt for nothing, do they? <laughs> right? you got to have some skill guys in the arsenal. It's not very fun for these other teams are going to have to f uh, face this Panther squad this yeah. year. That's for sure. Yep. So, NC State the punt from Cole. 39 yards. Georgia State originates at its 14 here. Coates, who had the touchdowns in the ball game with Ellington. That's Hart in motion. Ellington 
Washington off a of play fake again. Loading up deep and looking for Penny Hart. And Engel was stride for stride with him. One. Panthers thought that Engel might have interfered with Penny Hart. I thought so too. He gave him a couple jabs. And, <laughs> and then he's running the jabber jaw afterwards with Penny Hart. Oh, wow. <laughs> and right up there is Jim. You see that coaching staff over there in the white wanting a flag. They won't get one, so it's second down and ten. Mm -hmm. Like the looks of Tanner Engel in just his second run here in a college game. See his high school from every ride at Universal Studios. <laughs> it's carry and Ellington. <laughs> you can't. On the RPO. <laughs> Got snowed under, and that was Jermaine Pratt. He kept the hustle on, and there was no place for Ellington to slip out here on this front side. A little bit of a delay and came and wrapped him up. They do a good job of bottling him up. Seriously, he's right there at Dr. Phillips High School. It's, I mean, it is in the shadow of Universal Studios in Orlando. And that was free. With that information right there? Yeah. 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 People, I mean, sometimes you want to know what you get for paying your cable bill. <laughs> right there, that kind of valuable information. Ellington in trouble again. On the run, cuts it loose and beyond the reach of Devin Gentry. Isaiah Moore was crafting the pass rush that time for the pack. Big three and out for NC State there. It certainly was. They, they, you know, again, though, they, they allow Ellington to slip out and to break contain. They, they have got to work on those, those ends, those edge rushers. They, they, and it looked like there maybe was even a little bit of a hold to pull that that defensive end down a little bit But still you've got to focus Holden was the rusher right there on, on keeping that quarterback contained Right punt knuckleball toward Thayer Thomas And he's gonna let it roll and it'll pick up steam for the Panthers and inside the 30 It's a 58 yard punt takes us to this week's edition of Toyota. Let's go places the Close King Indoor Practice Facility here at NC State. Privately funded, $14 million. And named in honor of NC State alums Derek Close and James King, who are both Wolfpack Club Board of Directors. And you can do everything in here. Uh, and, and James, I told people last spring and summer, when asked about the ACC, I said, well, we didn't visit a campus last year where there wasn't a shovel in the ground to do yeah, something. Yeah, well, and we didn't come here last year, right. so we didn't get to see this. The year before, they were just working on it. That's it. Ball at the 28. Finley on a little bootleg, leveling out the routes, and there's Thomas to catch at the 40 for the first down. Lazarus the stop. Eighth catch for Thayer Thomas today. It isn't that nice with, with the boot? Just cool and composed and let, let Thayer and Thomas come across the middle and clear those bodies underneath that second wave and that zone coverage. Nice, easy pickup. To move the chain. Five wide now. Finley bailing here to his right. Shoots it back inside and the catch is made. Boy, that's a nice grab in traffic. Ryan Finley's pass is complete to number 28. Dylan, Dylan Parham, Parham, the tight end. Hit by Jerome Smith after the first down mark. It's, it's a similar play here. You're giving it time to develop, and, and there's a, a yep, shoulder injury. It looks like the Smith. Yep. Trying to avoid the helmet to helmet targeting contact. Don't forget this week on ACC All Access with your host Jeff Fischel, an in-depth look at Willie Taggart, who's now returned to his home state of Florida, a native of Bradenton as the head coach of the Seminoles, and an exclusive journey down the road to Charlotte. All AC ACC All Access is back with Jeff Fischel. Check your local listings. Here is Ryan Finley on a first down. And slips it to Harmon. Five or six yards on the play with Jalen Jones, another tackle. Well, we saw Jerome Smith leave the game, and here's why. You see, he leads with that shoulder, and, and very smart. I mean, that's the way you got to approach. He leads with the shoulder, and it's, it's going to be the shoulder they're working on over there, but trying to avoid 
A targeting call getting ejected. I mean, back in the day, that's a launch. You go right at the guy's headgear, try to take his helmet off because he is defenseless and is protecting him. And that's the way it should be, but at the same time, it opens up some of these defenders to the shoulder injuries. Long throw, and this is Riley staying in bounds. Couple of nice moves inside the 25 for C.J. Riley. 20-yard throw from Finley. Puts him close to 300 on the day. First career touchdown in those four catches last week. Watch these feet. Still look to be some green in between, putting on the brakes and trying to get a whole lot more. He's going to be a fun one, just a sophomore. And a couple of yards for Penix here. By the way, the throw by Finley on 20 yards to Riley gives him 302 today, James. That's his 12th career game of 300 yards or more. Phillip Rivers is the Wolfpack career leader with 19. But I'll offer you this. That's 12 games of 300 yards, and today's his 28th start. It's almost half by my math. <laughs> yeah. Gillespie he off a of play fake. Start. Finley again. The catch made Harmon inside the 10. First and goal for the Wolfpack. Seventh three. catch for Calvin Harmon. As NC State gets back into the CPI security red zone. And Penix returns at the running back spot with Finley. State has done an excellent job today, personnel wise, James. Back way beyond White up there. Up top defending now. Stepping in for Jerome Smith. He started last week. Finley dumps it. Amezi at the five. Dives to the one. It'll be second and goal. Mecca Amezi taken down by Kai Anderson, whose dad, by the way, played football here at NC State at a Riverwood High School in Atlanta. Just pitching and catching it. Oh. Take your pick on these receivers, huh? Talk about spreading the love. Family might have been busted, but nonetheless, dumps it in zone to Penix for the score. I thought he wanted to fake a handoff to Penix. Instead, he whirly bird out of there, James, and found the freshman at the goal line. Well, it was a couple boots to begin this drive. And a similar look here, but they didn't even have to wait on this one with the nice fake. Just waiting on it immediately after turning around is Penix. And that was an impressive drive there by the Wolfpack. First career touchdown for Trent Penix. And the point after by Dunn is good. Eight plays, 72 yards for the Wolfpack in three minutes and 20 seconds. And with 3.43 to go, Ryan Finley has thrown his second touchdown pass of the day. And this one to the rookie from Sanderson High School in Raleigh, Trent Penix. This week's edition of ACC Stories. Well, tonight at College Station. Ooh. You like that one, don't oh, you? Oh, I can't wait. How about these guys? Huh? Man, they looked fast last weekend. Yep, the battle is on in the Atlantic. Syracuse, by the way. Orange uh, hosting Wagner today with Dungey at the mark. Wes, look at everything that they lost there at Virginia Tech defensively. I know. You know, everybody talks about the studs they lost here. They lost some studs up there in Blacksburg. Seven first-time starters Monday night on defense for Bud Foster. In an all-new secondary. And, and Except I, for Reggie Floyd, the it, Rover. It, that right, was it. Right. And and looked like, I mean, they looked like one of the better teams in football. It, it was impressive. And I mean. One guy in the back seven, James. Reggie Floyd's the only guy in the back seven returning as a starter. And to play like that in Tallahassee, to make, to make them look like the slower football team. There'll be no return here by Hart. I will add this before we get to our Aflac trivia question. Deshaun McLeese ran the ball effectively the other night for them. That freed up Josh Jackson, too. Absolutely. Aflac. Oh, look at here. Aflac trivia question. The ACC is the only conference to win four major national titles in the last four years. Who are the four teams? Four major national titles in the last four years. Who are the teams? Well, you got to be counting basketball. All right. So Notre Dame. Uh... You got a what? national title with Clemson, national title right. with North Carolina, and one with Virginia, baseball. 
Okay. Okay. College so what, what is what is what is everything major? Baseball, basketball, football? Is that yeah, the, yeah, both basketballs, football and baseball. All right. Now there's been lacrosse. There's been uh, soccer final fours. I'm not sure at national title. I don't call the national title. But I'm going to go in the baseball, both basketballs, football and baseball. Those are the four. Yeah, no, it's, I think that's it. But, you know, when you go into some of the other sports, that, yeah. they got a heck of a swim program there you here. Go. Brayton Holloway's done a good job with the men and women. Yep. They might be knocking on the door before too long. Trey Barnett the carry. All right, let's see how Durham do on quick trigger here today. Like the duck in the chair. It looks like us on Fridays. Clemson, Carolina, Notre Dame, Virginia. Can't slot one. You can't slide one by us up in here. Wow, and, and what gets tricky there is, is the Notre Dame. That's it. Sitting here in a football stadium, and, and then you forget. Yep. Third and short now. State trying to get another three and out on the Panthers. And let's see. Nope, didn't get it. Boy, no, Ellington. I, I think he did. I think he did, Wes. They got like it. Yep. it to him. They did not get the three and out. Ellington converts. You know, and you look back at it, coulda, shoulda, woulda, but that fourth down was a similar type situation, and, and I just don't think by any stretch that NC State has manhandled that offensive line, and they yep. tried to get fancy. It ended up in NC State driving down the, the field and scoring a touchdown, but a fourth and one deep in NC State territory, and they chose to get fancy with the reverse that went nowhere. There they'll move it. Similar situation this time, a third and short to keep this drive alive. A couple minutes left in the third. It's been all Wolfpack. 27 unanswered. Ellington hit as he throws. Catch by Hart. Penny Hart breaking free. Into state territory. Lost his helmet on the flyby tackle by Engel. And Georgia State's got it. Wolfpack territory at the 31. On another grab by Hart. 34 yards here, James. Watch Ellington looking straight down the barrel. He knows he's going to get hit, stands in there strong, delivers, and then here's the back end of it. Here comes Penny Hart. Nice little move after the catch on Dexter Wright. There have been, been a couple instances. That whistle was on that play. I thought it was live. And here's yeah. a gift to Destin Coates. He'll get, he'll get a couple of yards. It's like, wait a minute. No one's stopping. That's why I kept talking. It's your main the tackle. Go but, ahead. But, but there have been a, a couple plays that they're not going to be able to survive some of these close games if they don't. Go that last line of defense, that these safeties, okay. they, they've got to come up and they've, they've got to secure these tackles. You're talking about like next week. Yeah, exactly. When West Virginia comes to town. That time it was Dexter Wright. The senior just come under control. Even if you, you give them an extra five or so yards, make a sure tackle. Christian Owens the catch in space on the South Carolina transfer. And now flag is added to it. Maybe a little late contest from NC State. Looked like Moorhead might have gotten a piece of Owens as he worked out of bounds. After the play, personal foul, late head out of bounds, number 31 defense, half a distance to the goal, first down. You know, that's kind of tough because I, you can just tell from the body language, Moorhead, if he's going to keep going, you know, you got to think. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got to think there's the whistle, right, like two beats before. Yeah. And, and he's still running full speed. Ah, that's a tough one. That's. And Dave Doran looking at a replay. I think he saw what I saw in the replay, that Owen stepped out of bounds well before the hit. And there wasn't a whistle to indicate that Owens had gone out of bounds. Well, and they're going to have a review of that. The now watch is, here. One, two, there. There he's out. That's out. Okay. Now watch this. Keep rolling if we can. Yeah. I, I can't, we can't blame Jarius Moorhead there, but at the same time, the penalty will stand. They, they, nothing's going to take this penalty off. So. Might give them a few yards. If you're NC State, you got to get a few yards back uh -huh. here at the 42-second mark of quarter three. We showed you the uh, end zone look. Here's another one. Okay. 
He's out of bounds there. And then keeps moving up the field. He went out of bounds back around the 24 yard line. You know, as a defender here, yeah. and I know we're looking at that, it's okay. So, so let's say the offensive guy puts his shoulder down and runs over the defensive guy. At the 24 yard line, therefore the penalty will be enforced to the 12. First down. So there you go, James. It's a half yard. Yeah. <laughs> it goes back a half yard. And, but, but just to finish up, if that offensive player wanted to lower his shoulder and run over the defensive guy, that nobody would have cared. But, you know, and that's basically what was going on there maybe. It's just two guys bowing up. I'm not going to let you run over me. Right. And, and they get the, the flag, and it, it'll take them up to the 12 and a half instead of the 12 or however that works out. Yeah. Pistol set with Coates the backfield. Tight end to the right, two receivers. Play fake from Ellington. Back in the middle, here's Coates at the five. And it'll be second down, Jermaine Pratt. 41st career game today for Pratt. He was the guy, James, who a year ago with the guys they were losing, Pratt was a playmaker. That'll be the final play of the third, by the way. Pratt was the playmaker. He's a guy that came off the bench last year in sub packages and was very productive. NC State. Leading by 20, we go to the fourth and final period in Raleigh on an ACC Saturday right after this. <laughs> ACC football is brought to you by CPI Security, the official security partner of the Atlantic Coast Conference. We start quarter four here in Raleigh with Dan Ellington and the Panthers. Second and short at the five. NC State scored 27 in a row. As we open the fourth from Raleigh. Ellington wants to throw, back pedals. And a flag thrown as the touchdown catch is made by Roger Carter, who hit the pylon. And Penny Hart is not happy at all here. Litigating on behalf of Georgia State with this officiating crew, the wide receiver. And you can hear Hart saying, I was behind the line of scrimmage. So is this a procedure penalty that is going to be contested or not here? They got a lot of players around this crew. <laughs> Trying to help them out. Yeah. Pass well, interference on the offense. Number 18, 15 yard penalty. Didn't see it as it developed, but it, uh, pick play basically is yep. what I'm thinking that, that they're calling on Penny Hart. Well, this kid is fascinating to start with just because of how hard he goes, James, regardless of the score. With this entire team. Yeah. Entire team. I mean, how many times have they? I mean, they're just the way that Ryan Finley in this offense has, has marched at times, but just refusing to give up. And here, in the fourth quarter, just trying to chip away, see if they can get back into this game. Ellington steps up and tripped up from behind by Murchison. Let's go back to the snap before here on the goal line. So here's 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 your there's your pick right there, and that's what they were calling. He was saying he was behind the line of scrimmage, but he, he was down there, and it's what would have been a touchdown. Now third and fifteen, James. They can get a first down. Right. They got to get up close to that goal line. Got a long way to go here. I'm not thinking field goal either. Ellington lobbing for Champagne, and he was defended by McLeod. It's the exact same spot they went for the game winner in the come from behind win last weekend. Good coverage here this time, though. And taking too long to go. Can go ahead and try to get three out of it. 
Sean Elliott's really likes this Brandon Wright. Yep. Missed earlier from 44, by the way. And this is 34. Holdenson is the holder. Blocked. And Wright will fall on it back at the 38-yard line. Turned away again. And then some. Dave Doran told us yesterday, I feel like we can get a block punt in this football game. If we get a chance, we're going to get a block punt tomorrow. They may not have a block punt, but they got the block field goal try by Brian. The big man getting back there with the big old paw. And it's Wolfpack ball one more time with a 20-point lead. ACC football is brought to you by the official corporate champions of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Geico. New York Life. Bojangles, famous chicken and biscuits. Food Lion. And by Toyota. Wolfpack operating its 38-yard line. A mezzi. Stiff arm one, and we'll get to the 45. Nice play. Seven yards on first down. Fourth catch for Emeka Amezi. And here is... They got an injured Georgia State player, and it's Remy Lazarus. Here's our bad boy mowers covering ground. I'll and say. all the targets Ryan Finley's unloaded to today. Well, that doesn't even count the one that that Thomas threw earlier. Yeah. You throw Darden into the mixer. Another Wolfpack player with the reception. Timeout as they uh, tend to Lazarus here in Raleigh. Well, the injury a moment ago to Lazarus here, James, on a Mezzi fighting for extra yardage. There he is, just comes in low. They're taking Lazarus to the locker room. He's a safety. They're starting corner, Jerome Smith, the senior. Already out. That's a junior or senior on a defense that doesn't have many upperclassmen at all. Second and four, and Penix can't find much room there. Stevens McQueen. Trajan Stevens McQueen out of West Mech in Charlotte, along with uh, Terry Thomas there, 55 involved. And we've got a player shaking up, and that is, I think, Stevens McQueen. Now we might be in the heat of the day here, James. Some of this is, and I hope, you know, cramps or whatever, yeah. but some guys here, it's been hot and cooking. And Stevens that, McQueen, good looking prospect for a sophomore in this program. But that might be a little bit more than a calf cramp. Yeah, let's even. hope so. You know, it, it's funny. Uh, Rebecca did the hit earlier on, on the heat last weekend. Rebecca, Dave Doran even told us that he lost 10 pounds. And now I'm not kidding, he said. The last weekend <laughs> after the game, he lost 10 pounds. Uh, yeah, he walked off the field 10 pounds lighter for sure. And, and this week is, is much of the same. I mean, we mentioned the heat index down here on the field is in the 90s. In the concourses here, it's in the triple digits. So there's, you know, there's all kinds of plans in place for fans. But uh, for these players, it's, it's about staying hydrated. It's about staying loose. And and it's about these these misting fans on the sidelines are awesome. I keep trying to get walk by those myself because yeah. it is really hot. Brady Bodine has come in out of Camp Lejeune. We're at 33. He's beside Finley in the gun here. Inside route, Steph Lewis, second catch of the day. And then fumbled it, but Riley fell on it inside the 40 at the 38, and Lewis is down. Just back in the lineup this week, Steph Lewis is still down. And Lewis is still down.
Oh, wow. Uh, you know, it's it's not a helmet to helmet. It's Steph Lewis's helmet that goes down when yeah. he got hit by the shoulder mm. pad. Just hope he's okay as they bring in some help. Well, the best news yes. of the day is that Stephen Lewis is to his feet and going to be able to walk away. But that just happened. It was yeah. moments before. It... Oh, that was a scary few minutes there, kids. It's an incredible kid right there, Steph Lewis, one of seven children from West Palm Beach. And, and again, there it's. Is, You see the collision here. And it's, you know, I mean, you can't blame the defender on this. He's, he's coming in, actually, he's trying to avoid the helmet. That, that's all that matters right there. Number one, looks like he's going to be okay. Yep. So back to action, first and 10 to 38 after the second catch of the day by Lewis. And the fumble recovered by Riley. And Bodine has stayed in the ball game in the backfield. Odin, graduate student, number 33. <laughs> He's the guy that Dave Dorn pointed out to watch out for on all the special teams. Finley, straight drop, little flip down the field for Harmon, who makes a great catch at the 22 with Jalen Jones all over him. Eighth catch of the day for Kelvin Harmon, who's over 100 yards. And he's shaking up here. Again, all the time that Finley needs. Just puts it out there for those those crossers. They're, they're coming across that field on those different levels. Get the wind knocked out of him here. Hard to tell. That's what I would guess. Kind of landed on the football and making the catch. Held on to it all the way through. And Kelvin Harmon's okay, it looks like. Tenth straight completion for Finley, who earlier in the day hit 12 in a row. James. First and 10. Ball at the 22 with three minutes gone here in the fourth period. Brady Bodine. Nothing there. Might have lost a step. Michael Shaw, the outside linebacker, the hit. Down 20. Panthers continue to fight. No, have been like a, a parrot up here singing the praises of, of those guys from Atlanta, but it, it really is a team that's that's come in here and, and fought hard throughout this game. And which is next 11:25, <laughs> go all the way to the final whistle to give teams in their conference some fits this year. Finley, backside throw. Accepted. Quavian White works his way back out of the end zone. Cutting back upfield and eluding guys toward the 24 and a half. First interception of the year for Ryan Finley. And just the 15th of his Wolfpack career. Well, Quavian White started against Kennesaw State, the true freshman, because he was a little bit better against the run. Looking pretty good here coming back for this football. And really, Finley throws it way too short, makes it easy on him. <laughs> Tries to do some running of his own. So the Panthers will take over at the 24 with almost four minutes gone here in the final period. It's hard to believe with all this, these youngsters out here, it's the first turnover of the game this late. Barnett, mm. big lick. And the ball pop loose. Tanner Engel. Using Come that on, Rook. <laughs> Using that noggin. Come on, Rook. <laughs> Man, look at him. This is Batesy right here. Shoot. That is Batesy-like. No. Got, that guy's got to aim high. He can't be like Batesy. He can be a lot better than Batesy as it was. <laughs> True freshman. 
Man, look at him. He, he, no, no flash either. He's got no sweatbands or wrist taped up, no gloves. Like those baseball players go up there and just grip it and rip it. Here's a throw, Ellington. Long shot here to the near side. That's McCoy breaking free for a moment. Out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Tanner Inglis side to side, James. Well, the league better get ready to look at this kid, huh? Dave Dorn wasn't selling us any bill of goods right. there, was he? Right, and you know, it, it, his eyes lit up. He said he's, he's just a freak. And it, initially, we thought, you know, he's just a, an athletic freak. Right. And, and shoot, it, that's showing, too, that, that he's athletically, he's, he's as good as anybody on the field. But he said more so, just mentally. He just, he understands the game, what's going on around him. He's very mature. And always knows where he needs to be. Very smart football player and confident. Demarcus Kirk will draw off the spread set. McLeod the tackle for the Wolfpack. You know, it's interesting. You get that one turnover, and it's, it's really a big number when you look at turnovers under Dave Doran with this Wolfpack team. It's, it's a team prior to today that's 20 and 5 when they win the turnover battle, and they've won their last 10 when they've been at least even in the turnovers. A lot of makeup here, leading three scores for Georgia State. I have a chance to win in this one, but right now they're winning the turnover battle. Ellington on the deep. And track down just beyond the 45. We go under nine minutes to go. Deontay Holden, the grad student, Landover, Maryland. Well, already one final in the ACC. Duke has beaten Northwestern in Evanston today. 21 to 7. Daniel Jones, 192 yards and three touchdowns, James. Wow. That's a big win on the road. They, yep, they're, in Waco. they're in Waco next week for Baylor. Northwestern looked pretty good last week in the win over Purdue. Ellen did three steps. Hart the catch, just his third of the day. A knockdown shy of the first down. Nick McLeod was there. And also it looked like that uh, Pratt, yep. Yep. Jermaine Pratt, another tackle. A little bit quiet today after his 12 tackles. Leader of this defense, Jermaine Pratt. Yeah, we'll tackle. We'll go under eight minutes here. And the Panthers are going to load it up on fourth down. That's Bateman in the backfield with Ellington. He gets the call and will have the first down. There have been, been a handful of these short yardage situations offensively for Georgia State when they don't try to get tricky. That, that they've really won that punch. They, you know, and it's these little things that you've got to clean up before a big team like West Virginia comes in next week, that's for sure. Yes, sir. Fresh set of downs for the Panthers at the NC State 49. Ellington going to cut it loose and offline downfield looking for Gentry. Gentry just kind of eased up on his route, it looked like a little bit. And I think that's what Sean Elliott's saying. My goodness, he just kind of looking at it and decided to change gears and speed it back up, but a little too late. Well, Tanner Ingle's been all over the place today, including a huge stop on fourth down earlier in this half. Second in the full 10 here. And they'll cross it with Page. Flag down as Seth Page gets a first down. We'll see if it stands, though. Might have been in the neighborhood of a hold. I think it might have been Hunter Atkinson. Left tackle. Holding. Offense. Number 76. 10 yep. yard penalty. Second down. Atkinson out of Flowery Branch, Georgia. Started his career at Georgia in Athens as a tight end. Mama, he's not a tight end anymore. <laughs> no, 295-pound left tackle. Just like Bradbury over there for NC State. Yep. Get around that training table. <laughs> a few more reps at the training table, right? <laughs> Penalty will cost the Panthers. 
like Bobby Boucher when he stopped eating snake. Oh. Snakes don't really have parts, but I would say it's his knee. <laughs> Ellington a pump fake. Reroutes. Now we'll step out of bounds. And we're looking at third down coming up. And hey, how about Tanner Engel? He's our Honda Generators power play right here. And there's more power to come. We talked about some guys missing some open field tackles. <laughs> when you're a heat-seeking missile like number 10, the true freshman from Dr. Phillips in Orlando, Florida, that's not the case. You don't give them a chance to give you any wiggle. You just go right at them and drop them. That's a power play that you're going to see a whole lot more of, Wolfpack fans. A lot of football to be played. Third down, 20 to go. Little option read, and here is Coates, who had the touchdown earlier today. And he's taken out by Isaiah Moore. How about the job that Dan Ellington continues to do yeah. for Sean Elliott? You know, it, it, the first thing you hear when they talk about 13, these coaches from Georgia State, no ego, he's yeah. such a good kid such a good kid and it's the way you need your leaders to be and he's you know he's even though he is a junior he's a juco transfer and he's he's new yep. to Atlanta. fourth down play here for the Panthers and now timeout is taken Sean Elliott wants to burn one here we'll take it with him 524 to go to Raleigh Twenty-seven to seven, five and change left to go in the first meeting ever between Georgia State and NC State here at Carter Friendly Stadium in Raleigh. Next week we got a doubleheader on an ACC Saturday for you. We'll start at 12:30 in Pittsburgh. Looks like Georgia Tech will be a win and a loss, trailing South Florida 11 late in Tampa, and then Pitt and Penn State tonight. James, I was wrong last week. It's the final meeting scheduled in Pittsburgh between the two teams. They do play at Beaver Stadium next year, State College. Just one more, and then they're not scheduled for quite some time. Correct? Not at all. Ah. Mm. Fourth down. Ellington shoots it to the far side, off the hands of Effetti, and NC State gets the hold, and the Wolfpack will take over. And here's our... That's the Toyota Rockets. Tweet of the Week. The and it's the Ice Wolf. <laughs> yeah. You like this, yeah, didn't you? I do. Yeah. I do. Look at it. Ice Wolf jersey. Even hit the vanilla ice line for you in the tweet. Ice, ice, baby. Jerseys look sharp. I'll tell you what is nice. Our director, Lonnie Dale, show me a helmet here in a minute. The Wolfpack logo on the side of those helmets. Woohoo! <laughs> Yeah, big toughy. Man, you can see those from the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you now, there's no doubt who's playing today. Look at that logo goes almost over the crown of the helmet, Bates. I know, I like it. I like the beauty. Yeah, you better believe they like being cool in them. Oh, yeah. And some dark color. Another apparel update, Rebecca. Yeah, exactly. Hey, you guys, I was talking to Isaiah more about these unis yesterday. Uh, and he basically said these are his favorite uniforms he's ever worn in his entire life of playing football. His favorite. And he said, you know what? When you look good, you feel good. Isn't that right? Mm. And when you feel good, you play good. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fashion police is what we are. We got to check on the jerseys. We got a whole set of NCAA rules relating to jerseys. And we got different jerseys every week. There's another catch for Thomas on the slant from the slot. And James's favorite player, Chris Bacon, the tackle. Chris B. Bacon. Well, I don't know that we don't know, yeah, I know that his not. middle name. A guy starts can dream, though, right? Yes. Chris Philip Bacon. What's so wrong with that moment, Nothing. Dad? Not, not at all. That would have been all right. By the way, here's here's uh, here's the old boys from State U with the no-nos on the jerseys this year. Yeah. Can't go the Ezekiel Elliott up there in the top right either. <laughs> yeah. Can't do that anymore. No, his, his were, were way up there. They were, they were what, like speedos. What about the midriff in the top right? You can't show the abs anymore. I never had abs to show, so it wouldn't, <laughs> have, wouldn't have mattered to me. Here's Finley on first down. Brady Bodine. Fight for yardage. About three more. Second and seven coming up. Well, we told you already about Duke. 
And South Florida 11 point lead. By the way, Jimmy Laycock's in his final year at William and Mary. Just a marvelous run of nearly 40 years as the coach of the tribe. And that's a big win for Justin Fuente. Remember, they just played Monday night, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Wake Forest, Sam Hartman. They're in a delay, by the way, James. A little weather over at BB&T. And then, uh-oh, BC rolling on. That's not too far from us, is it? No, well, we got an hour and a half change. Two hours, maybe. Show you the night slate in the ACC. Bodine to cut back. Brady Bodine touchdown. touchdown. Grad student from Camp Lejeune, and Dave Doran likes it. It's Bo time. <laughs> That's awesome. You should have seen that sideline. It, it, when guys like that, that just all they want to do is just help this team, so unselfish, special teams guy, a hustler, whatever you want, coach, whatever you want to, and then he scores one in a game like this, man, there's nothing better than watching his buddies party and the entire bench just lit up. And for Don's point after, is good. Brady Bodine on the march to the end zone here. Nice cutback, James. Yeah, the vision. I mean, you see, that's the thing. The offensive line's been washing him down quite a bit. And he's got the vision. Take advantage of it. A couple guys over running is off to the races for big 33. 39-yard run. Untouched with 312 to play. Four plays, 55 yards, 208 for Brady Bodine. And NC State leading 34 to 7. Here's a quick check of the night schedule. Starts at Miami at 6. Savannah State, Indiana State, Sycamores. No Larry Bird in the lineup tonight against <laughs> Louisville. Virginia, Indiana, James, that's one I want to keep an eye on yep. in addition to AM, yep. Clemson, Penn State, Pitt. And by the way, I think the Panthers tonight are going in your favorite jerseys. They yeah, better. They're going in the yellow. Oh, man. I With know you were hoping to see know, it next week. Well, you, you know, it because it'll look so good in contrast with those old school Penn State unis. That's good. That's going to be a good looking football game. That's for sure. Yeah. I can't wait to see what happens there at Valley Station. Those big guys from Clemson go on the road. Fair catch for the Panthers. They'll scrimmage at the 25. Or Upcoming schedule brought to you in part by Logan's Roadhouse, and here's what Dave Doran's got. Will Greer with David Sills and Gary Jennings here next week. West Virginia's a little depleted at linebacker. Then a road trip to Edwards Stadium in Huntington. Then Virginia, B.C. here before Clemson and Syracuse in back-to-back -back weeks, James, and Florida State, by the way, behind that. And Virginia looks to be a little bit better this year. Boston College is definitely better this year. A lot of home games to start this year for Dave Gorn. Oh, that's a penalty. Aaron Winchester hands it to Page. No flag on the play as Holden makes the stop with three minutes to go. Looking like a bit of a horse collar. Maybe he's got a whole bunch of dreadlocks. He let go. Yeah, sure did, didn't he? Oh, he wow. had his hair, didn't he? Yeah, he did have the hair. Loss of five. It'll be second and 15. Ellington. And complete. A Winchester, I should say. He lost it and now recovered. How about this? Trowell tried to score. But is he ruled out of bounds? <laughs> Man, what chaos we had. That was Winchester who completed the pass. And then the ball the got stripped out away. Of bounds at the 12-yard line. First down, North Carolina State. So there you go. With 224 to go. That's DeAndre Champagne, by the way. Definitely a catch. He just never, never tucked it away. Well, here is Maurice Twile, Trial rather. Oh, oh yeah. man. That'll oh, Trial, that will. And he actually got a couple extra yards from where he originally stepped out. And then the fumble in the end zone that 
not quite sure who recovered. There, the arbiters were late on the arrival to the fumble in the end zone. <laughs> well, it was it was kind of similar last weekend defensively. The he had uh, Bryant with the fumble recovery, yeah. and he fumbled. That's it. NC State got it back. Here's Matthew McKay, by the way, redshirt freshman from Raleigh. Now at the quarterback spot for NC State. Finley's day is done with another 300-yard effort. Oh, we got all sorts of people moving. False start. Turnovers are even, 47. by the way, at one. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, that, so that streak should stay alive now, then. It's now it, NC State will move to 11 straight wins when they've been even at the worst in the turnover battle. So 21 and 5, and I believe, overall when even or, or winning the turnover battle. Yep. Bodine again. Hit the cutback for a couple. Chase Middleton the stop. By the way, it's a double header next week. We're 1230 from Heinz Field with James Rebecca and myself and then Evan Lepler and Takeo Spikes will be at Cardinal Stadium for Louisville and Western Kentucky in the Commonwealth. Big win for Takeo's Auburn Tigers and yeah, Takeo will be ready to ATL. talk with Evan about all that one. Oh yeah. It, I wish the Kentucky Derby were going. I'd like to see what kind of outfit Takeo would wear to the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> he, he's a sharp dresser. I'll bet you he would go all out. You think so? He should just act like the Kentucky Derby's going on. Yeah. You know? I'm sure you can influence that. Yeah, just got to get everything tailored, though, because it's got to fit that neck. <laughs> he's got the biggest neck I've ever seen, man. <laughs> and that neck's connected to a hard head. He can knock him down. Final he's 90 love to watch him play. <laughs> Carter Finley. NC State's going to be 2-0 with West Virginia next week, James. A lot to look over for Dave Huxtable's group. And there's the flag. Pass intended for Riley. From McKay. And now there'll be a discussion here among David Epperly's crew. With 116 left to go. Here's referee Epperly. Pass interference on the defense, number two. Ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First down. Kearney, the linebacker. It's bow time. Once again, can he, can he get two here? <laughs> Brady Bodine behind McKay. Pistol look. Bootleg and McKay will score. Matthew McKay, the redshirt freshman from Raleigh in the end zone here in the final 72 seconds. Pretty drawn up, pretty well executed play. Everybody's selling out defensively. Defense just shows Georgia State continue to play hard until the, the final bell. And Everyone just over pursuing. 41 unanswered by the Wolfpack, who are headed to 2 0. Well, we rejoin live action here. Terrence Dixon, the catch from Aaron Winchester. And boy, did you guys miss a lot. No. <laughs> James, they did not. Uh, by the way, uh, I was just thinking, making a note here, after our visit yesterday with Elijah Drinkwitz, the Offensive coordinator of NC State. You see the incomplete pass stops the clock with 42 seconds left. NC State, James and Rebecca have had 11 offensive possessions today for 41 points. And he told us he likes what? Better than three points of possession, right? right. Their average today is 3.72 points per possession. I'd say the OC yeah. will be pretty happy tonight, right? He would like, he would like the perfect world a couple more possessions. Yes. Because it was 12 to 13 That's is it. where he likes to be. Yep. But yeah, that, it just eight possessions in that opener against James Madison. That's right, yeah. How are they? What do you have as far as uh, balance, running and passing the football? Because that, that's one thing that's been interesting when you look over the last couple of years under yeah. Coach Drinkwitz. 70 plays today, and they have run it 
30 times and thrown it, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, run it 31 and thrown it 39 today, James. Pretty good. Yeah, not bad. It was a, it, it was leaning heavy pass last weekend, the win against James Madison. Here's the running back, Coates. Banged out of bounds in the final half minute here. All right, give me a thought on NC State West Virginia next Saturday afternoon here at 3.30. As we've seen, all of these receivers that can do damage yeah. to a defense. And West that's, Virginia that's depleted so, at linebacker, by the way. It, and, and that's so exciting, and, and it, it fits nicely with a team that is still searching. I, I don't think that they answered, hey, this is our second string back or even right. this is the guy that's really going to take us where we want to be you know and it's shoot you've been spoiled by Hines who, who's been fantastic for him and and I really think that that shows as much as anything because I, I still feel like they can get a push with four guys I yep. feel like they've got some studs up there uh, I think that's the biggest thing that they'll miss this year is Hines not just Chubb and all those guys on the defensive side final play of the game Winchester Spun around in the pocket, now wants to reroute. He'll throw here to Dixon. And the tackle will be made at the 25. And the ball game is over. So NC State, 41 unanswered. And the Wolfpack get the win. They go to 2-0. Sean Elliott and Georgia State, they'll go to level par. They are in Memphis next week to meet the Tigers. NC State gets West Virginia before they set sail on the road for the first time against Marshall in Huntington, West Virginia, coming up in a couple weeks. Panther fans need to be proud of this football team. 41 to 7 doesn't look real pretty right now. Yeah. But it, it was a lot better looking. It, it was a hard fought battle for Georgia State. Rebecca Capel with Wolfpack head coach Dave Doran. Well, coach, you said you look to see the most improvement from your team between weeks one and weeks two. What did you see out there today? Oh, you know, it wasn't clean. It was a good win. I mean, defensively, kept them off the scoreboard. You know, there's a lot of things that we got to get better at, but uh, love the result at the end. You know, obviously got to play a lot of guys. It was great to see some guys score their first touchdowns, you know, so that's fun for them. And We'll enjoy that in the locker room for sure. And you also told me that the best part of game day for you is when you see one of those plays that you've practiced on and practiced on, and then it's executed in a game. We saw that in the first half, a little trickeration there. Yeah, on the double pass. Yeah, that was a really good play. Coach drew it up, and, you know, Thayer hitting Trent Penix, his first career catch. And there's a bunch of firsts today. We had four players, I think, score their first touchdown, so that's pretty good stuff. West Virginia's next. What do you need to do before that game? Heal up. It's got to heal up. We'll go celebrate this one, and then we'll see, you know, where we're at tomorrow. And guys that know are going to have a great week getting ready for them. They're a great team. Coach, 2-0, and o, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Go Pack. All right. Guys. Dave, thank you very much. Congratulations to you and your team. James, excellent effort by NC State, particularly Ryan Finley was as impressive as we thought he would be. Well, they kept him clean. He's got some weapons to spread it around to and a big offensive line to protect him. Nice day for Ryan and the Wolfpack. Big schedule in the ACC next week as well. We'll see you at 1230 from Heinz Field with Georgia Tech and Pitt in the Coastal Division, then Western Kentucky, Louisville in the nightcap. For our producer, Dave Berger, our director, Lonnie Dale, and our great crew, James Bates and Rebecca Capel, West Durham from West Raleigh. Good night.